Hey, welcome. Wow, you know what? This is just on the wrong place. Ooh, it's not light. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Roby Tech. Uh, sorry, I'm alive. Uh, it has just been a bit of a under the weather time for both myself and then my family. So I apologize for pushing a couple streams. So had to get better, but so glad to have you guys here. So glad to be here. Uh, having a lot of fun, doing another build, uh, and giving away a Ryzen, 7, uh, Ryzen 5 7600X, which would be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be, it's, I'm just telling you, it's almost like I needed this before getting to March because March is going to be absolutely bonkers. We are giving away like three, I think we're giving away three desktops next month alone. Um, on top of that, we uh, we actually ended up having uh, the person bail uh, on the MSI Cyborg laptop giveaway, so we're going to be redoing that, um, and just so much more, guys. It's going to be a crazy month next month, and it's just a good time to get you know, like everybody getting feeling better because, man, I'm going to need that energy uh, when we get to March. But it is so good to have you guys here. So glad to see you. I'm so stoked to actually uh, get to be hanging out with you tonight. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this build. Um, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to do, and I, I know it's probably been driving Thomas and Sean nuts because when I do this stuff, I'm always like trying to think of, man, how do I, how do I make this more appealing? How do I make this a better build? How do I make this uh, cooler for the people who are gonna wanna watch this, you know what I mean? So that way it's just something that's, you know, it doesn't feel like it's out of touch or out of reach. And so I have a lot of fun with planning these builds. Luckily we get to do it three times a week, most of the time, unless I'm sick. Um, and uh, so I'm really excited uh, for both the build this week, uh, today, and also on Friday where we're building, a, uh, sorry, on Saturday, where we're building a build for Make-A-Wish, which is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, Admiral Danius, thank you very much for the sub. 17 months, appreciate that. Green Crabs, thank you for the eight month. Turtle. 25 months. Uh, we have Cyber Aurelius, 30 months. And then we got Bernie Ban Benny Bannister um, also joining us. So guys, a lot of long-term subs here. Really glad to have you guys here. Um, and thank you so much for being such incredible community, such an incredible community uh, and uh, just loving tech and PCs. Um, it's been it's been a pretty pretty big week, you know what I mean? We have we have another G, brand new GPU that's out uh, in the 7900 GRE. Um, we're gonna have some builds of that coming up. We have an all AMD build coming up next week. Sorry, it was supposed to be on Saturday, but with me getting sick and pushing two builds, it's actually moving into next week. So we are gonna have some more AMD builds. We got new cards from new AMD cards coming from like Gigabyte. We have new AMD cards coming from ASRock. So I know a lot of you guys have been uh, you guys have been curious, like, hey, Roby, where's the AMD builds? Don't worry, they are coming, and especially as new cards and stuff come out. We also have 8800, an 8800 uh, 8800 build coming out. Though I really wanna do like a $5,000 8800G build just to really just kind of mess with the whole thing. Uh, Colt 45, seven months. Thank you very much. And then you waste 37 months. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I really, uh, I'm so glad to have everybody here uh, and to have some fun. So today we're checking out a brand new case from Be Quiet. Be Quiet is a sponsor for today's build. So huge shout out to them uh, for hooking us up with uh, all of the parts and stuff like that for today's build. Even though we're not using a Be Quiet AIO, cause they, I mean, sorry, Be Quiet either AIO or cooler because obviously they don't have a white AIO or cooler yet. I know it's something we talked about. Guys, one more until, hype, there's Hype Train right there. Mihai, thank you very much. Guys, there it is. I'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, we're gonna be checking out this brand new Be Quiet uh, Pro Base 901. Uh, it's their new white one with their new white silent wing fans. We're gonna put an air-cooled PC inside of it. Uh, so it should be a really, really fun build. Also, only 2,500 bucks. And then if you switch the motherboard, uh, it actually goes down to 2,400. And we're gonna be showing off that beautiful Aorus Pro X, their brand new white PCB motherboards as well, uh, which should be super cool. So it's going to be a really, really fun build, and I think you guys are gonna dig it. Let's talk about the giveaways. I'm gonna switch this very hefty thing over here one more time. So let's talk about giveaways that are happening today. First and foremost, we're giving away a Ryzen 5 7600X. Nerdshock, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Uh, the way that essentially works is that as long as you basically, uh, House of Tom resubscribing with Prime, there it is, level three. Um, the way that basically works is that as long as you're here, you're entered to win. Now, if you are a sub, like so many people are resubbing right now, then you get extra entries towards winning things like that Ryzen 5 7600X. So dropping your Prime sub is a great idea. And on top of that, you're gonna get extra entries towards the giveaways that we're gonna be doing in the month of March because they will happen uh, after March, uh, before March 29th. So drop in your sub now. Also get you in to win this beautiful Project Zero MSI system back here uh, that we're giving away to one lucky subscriber here in the month of February and March. So as long as you're subscribed, you're good to go. Now the way that works, if you 
are a tier one sub, you get three entries. Tier two, you get five entries. Tier three, you get 10 entries. And then every additional gifted sub gives you one additional entry towards getting this, uh, getting this PC. So if you're a tier one sub and then you gift 10 subs, then you get 13 entries towards winning uh, this uh, thing. Now, if we get a level five hype train, we'll give away a $25 new gift card. If we get 250 likes at YouTube, which is free, all you gotta do is head over to youtube.com slash RobyTechLive, head to hit that thumbs up button. We'll give away another $25 new gift card. And then 50 subs, $50 new gift card, $100 subs, $100 new gift card. And then it starts to grow from there. So the more you give, the bigger the giveaways that happen during a regular stream like today. So that is everything everything. Uh, let's see, Spazzin' Out, thank you very much. ZigPC, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Quiglag, thank you very much for the prime sub. Uh, Alker Dragon, thank you for the sub. Mad Admiral, thank you for the sub as well. You guys are killing it and I appreciate you. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. I don't know if I missed anything. I just, it's a regular stream, so it should just be us chilling and building and hopefully giving some stuff away. Or, uh, well, hopefully you'll be back before the stream's over. Baba Ganoush! I, dude, I can I just say how much I appreciate that you do this every time, just so I get to say your name. I think all in all, like, and it's it's I appreciate the monetary support, but thank you very much for that. And then you can head over to Smash uh, YouTube. The community challenge is what do you uh, or do you, I don't know that I don't know how to look at that question um, at all. So uh, so I don't know what that means. The 7600x we're giving away today. Yes, uh, Zig PC dropping 10 community subs already. Jeez, dude. Zig PC is like, I want that beautiful MSI PC back there. So there it goes. Uh, thanks very much for that, Zig. Guys, and we are now at level four. All we gotta do is finish level five and then we're, uh, we're good to go. And we got the, uh, <laughs> I don't blame you, dude. It's a sweet rig. It's, dude, it's attractive. So, and with that Project Zero stuff, it looks really, really good. Okay, guys, so we just gotta finish level five of which we are at 72% already. So if somebody wants to drop like another fiver or whatever it was, we'd basically be done and we can get on to building. Um, Anything else that I forgot? What is anything that I missed? Do you guys, any questions you guys have? You guys are here, I'm here to hang out with you. So if there's already 206 of you hanging out, so, uh, and I know we'll get to five, 600 people here later, but it, I hope you guys are doing awesome. E bust and loose, you're amazing. Sergeant Nobody, you are also amazing. Who is also very happy now that he has his working, uh, his working system. So thank you very much for that. One sub and we're already a $50 new gift card. Who's gonna drop that last sub? Um, driveway Cam, what's up, dude? Good to see you. We need one more sub, guys. Let's get on to the level. Let's get, let's get, the, unlock the 50 bucks already. Come on, let's do it. Let's just, one sub. We just need one person. Who's gonna be? What's up? There's level five, but we need one sub and we'll be at the $50 new gift card. There it is. I appreciate you. Uh, concentrice, concentrice. I know, I, I know I'm saying that completely wrong. And uh, you're, I apologize. Okay, let me go ahead and update the giveaway thing real quick. We're at 50 subs exactly, and on our way to our next goal. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, sub goal. And then we'll get into building, which is what you guys are all here for anyway, which is the fun thing, right? Sub goal. So we're on our way to a $100 new gift card. One hundred fifty zero two. Oh, let's just do zero three, one, 24. <clears throat> okay, there we go, guys. All right, so next goal. Okay, so that's got to go away. I must have to go to two. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, so I think, what is this not, why is this not working? Oh, it's working. Okay, good. And there we go. You, Jorgen, uh, thank you very much for the 10 subs. Um, let's see. Hey, Roby and Chad, can I use two PCI wires for my PSU to power my, with a 3-1 splitter? Um... Ideally, you want to put, you want to fill all three. Um, so you want, it's okay to do two and then one. So using two from one and then one separate one, but you want to be using at least two cables. So there we go. Uh, quick lag, we actually have one coming up. So in the 2500X. And we also have another one coming, a mini ITX coming up. Uh, with, we're doing with, um, uh, in the, um, oh my gosh, what is it called? Fractal uh, Terra. We're gonna be doing some Fractal Terra stuff. Zig PC, thank you very much for the other gifted sub. And there we are right there. And our Elric Tolkien, Troll King, thank you very much for that too. Yes, yeah, so we got some coming up. Concentric Eye, Concentric Eye. Thank you, Sergeant Nobody, I appreciate that. 
yeah, you, two cables for three connectors is fine, Kyla Green. Okay, you guys ready to start building? I th it feels like you guys are ready to start seeing builds, right? <clears throat> yes, Jin, you can. Uh, let's go. Okay, and then how many people are playing the new Final Fantasy VII? Uh, Final Fantasy VII, who, who's, who's playing that right now? Maybe that's, well, I mean, actually our viewership's fine. It's already at 300 people, so. Um, but anybody, anybody downloading, playing it? If you build it, we will watch. Too busy hell diving. I tell you, man, and did you see mechs are coming? Yeah, uh, I'm I, like, I, I wanna wait for it to get to PC, but I'm like almost will, I'm almost wanting to pick it up on PlayStation just for that. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about parts and let's start building, guys, because that's why you guys are here. Oh my gosh, this case is not light, by the way. All right, so what are we putting inside of this beautiful build today? And also, don't forget to head over to youtube.com slash Live. Hit that thumbs up button, because then we won't have to bother you guys once we get to 250 likes. Um, it's on PC. The new one is on PC? I don't, it's, no, it's on, it's, it's on, uh, it's uh, the one that just released today is only PlayStation 5. Yeah, it's a big case. Okay, here we go. Um, here's the parts that we're using in today's build. We're using the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. No, not Helldivers 2, Final Fantasy 7, Nigia. Uh, AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Motherboard using the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Pro X. This is that beautiful white PCB. Very, very excited about it. I uh, was playing with it a little bit if you saw it a little bit. Yeah, the, the new remake, yes. Uh, Gigabyte Aero NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. Uh, we have the Patriot Viper VP4300 Lite, two terabyte NVMe drive. Uh, we have, no, Avenge, the new one, the sec, so part two is out. Part two, Rebirth, not the remake, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is a remake of the original, but it's now in three parts, and this is the second of three, yeah. Okay, uh, Patriot Viper VP4300 Lite, two terabyte. Uh, we have the DDR5 6000 mega transfer. This is, I love doing this, guys. I love doing 48 gigs, you know, because everybody's like, the one thing that's nice about DDR5, you can actually do things in, in 24 gigs or 12 gig things. So I like doing a 48 gig build every once in a while. So I'm like, hey, let's let's just, you know, shake it up, throw 48 gigs in there. Um, I did? What, what PSU did you have? I have the Cooler Master. Oh, that is the wrong, no, you have the right one, Tom. The t I don't know why he put that in there. Yes, that's a mistake on his part. Uh, so we have the Dark Base Night Pro 901, Deepcool AK620 Digital, and then for the power supply, we have the Tough 750 Watt, which is, uh, can you email him, uh, Tom, or text him and tell him that that needs to be updated and then we'll update that? Also, PSU is wrong. So yeah, we'll get that fixed, guys, but that's what we're putting inside of it. Now, a couple things. I wanna talk about the why with these parts, right? Because I, I love to do that a little bit. A couple things, one, Ryzen 7 7800X3D, this is very much targeted at something that is um, for uh, basically gamers. 7800X3D, great chip just for gaming. Um, it does, you know, Cinebench is around 17,000, which, I mean, is okay. I mean, there's laptops that can essentially do that. But again, that's why I chose that particular one. For the board, even though we're showing the X670E, I think many of my tech specialists who are watching right now, you can get the B650 version, which is completely fine. Aura sent us this board to show off. I'm fine with using it. If I was gonna make a recommendation, do the B650 uh, Aorus Pro X. You're gonna save yourself hundred bucks and there's nothing that's gonna be in the X670 that you really need for this build. So it's gonna be about $2,400. For storage, I like the VP4300s. Uh, Patriot is very, very big on um, wear and tear, endurance, and at the same time, they found a new technology that doesn't require it to be DRAMless, so it has, that can be DRAMless with still the same seat times. They're very, very fast and also very, very inexpensive, which is something I really like about it. For cooling, because it's a 7800X3D, it's why I chose the AK620. More than enough power there, even if you were gonna throw on PBO to basically be able to cool this thing without any issues whatsoever. By the way, 76D76, thank you very much for the sub and 10 months. Uh, for the uh, GPU 4070 Ti, feel free. I mean, again, 4070 Ti, super, totally fine. Again, this is coming down to gaming, sh things that I like to show. I show both AMD and NVIDIA titles. If you do not play 
Alan Wake 2. If you do not play Cyberpunk 2077, you can absolutely switch this to a Ryzen 7, se uh, sorry, a Radeon RX 7800 XT, a 7900 GRE, anything like that you could absolutely do without any problem whatsoever. Uh, and I would not be upset at all. You could save a little bit of money. Again, AMD has been really going after it in terms of in terms of dropping their cost. And the other thing too, that's also really good with things like fluid motion frames and things like that as well, which just got added to Starfield, just got added to Call of Duty. We saw over 500 frames per second in Call of Duty when we were playing with fluid motion frames, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, so that's GPU wise, I wanna just be super clear. Just because I put a specific GPU in, doesn't mean that you're, don't mean that I'm, I'm not telling you that you should absolutely do this particular GPU. You should feel free to put whatever you feel fits your gaming thing. One thing I'll always say, guys, gaming is not, I mean, sorry, PC choices are not one size fits all. If you, like you could always make a decision, we have a great video on that anyway. Um, for the PSU, I'm gonna talk about this because it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of an interesting thing because my uh, my techs push pretty hard. Like, Roby, why do you keep recommending this PSU? As somebody who builds as many PCs as I do, I like for me, PC building experience is actually really important to me, especially if you're a new builder. The one thing that is really great about these Asus Tough and now the RG Strix version that's coming out there uh, of these particular builds is their cabling. And I'll show you, you'll see it when I go in there, but their cabling is so easy to work with. So when you're working with cable management in the very back, being able to easily bend your cables, not have to worry about sh trying to shove them down or anything or bend them nicely, something that is very, very good. Plus it's ATX 3.0, which means it's really easy to basically throw in there and work with cable extensions. Is it the best PSU? No. Will it have any problems? Absolutely not. It's a fantastic freaking, it'll, it has reliability, has a massive warranty, it's gold rated, you know what I mean? So I just wanna be, I wanna be super clear on that. So I wanted to explain a little bit about my choices when I'm putting them inside of the build. Uh, does, that, does that answer your questions, anything like that? If not, we'll go ahead and start building. Corsair Shift is good. And actually the cables for that are pretty good. Um, the one thing, because of the small connectors, it actually makes it pretty easy. I will say the one thing that I like over these versus the Corsair Shift is the Corsair Shift works really well, except for anything that's basically dual chamber. The, K, the, the, the PSUs I'm really excited about are the new Shift from, uh, from Lee and Lee, which actually will work really well with dual chamber, but not necessarily with standard cables like this. So yeah. Um, okay, cool. I think that's pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and start building then. And then we'll uh, we'll start looking at the case and stuff here in a minute. And again, huge shout out to Be Quiet for sponsoring today's stream. Oh. oh. And with a case like this, that's why I chose an air-cooled build. You could do an AIO build. This, build, this case actually supports a lot uh, in terms of uh, case support and things like that. But uh, the main reason that I want to do this is like they're, the cases their fans, their silent wing fans, three fans are so quiet. Um, and then they work really, really well for air cool or AIO. So, which is which is why I was like, hey, let's do AIO because it shows off Be Quiet in the best way. So, all right, let's go to top down, guys. You guys ready to see a very, very sexy, very sexy um, motherboard? And by the way, we also have the new Thermalrite. We have the new Arctic ones. We have some Arctic freezer AIO builds coming up as well as the new Thermalrite Evo as well, so we'll be showing that air cooler off because that air cooler is also very awesome. Guys, I just need, to, come here. Are you are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for a really beautiful MOBO? Just tell me you're ready. I, I need to see some hype in the chat. Are you ready to see a beautiful MOBO? I need to see it. I want some hype. Show me, I'm ready. Go, 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 go. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Go to top down, just be ready because this board is really pretty, okay? And there's a lot I really like about this board. Ugh. Okay, so you guys, here we go. I'm showing you the money, because it's not cheap, but we, uh, it's, 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 it's beautiful. Okay, if I can open it, which I already have opened it. It's already got an OS on it and everything. Okay, here we go, guys, you ready? So the back of the board is like a, I feel like I'm failing at this unboxing here. Okay. So the back of the board is like a light gray, which is actually pretty cool. Team up, fight on, no peeling or anything like that. It's got this, this ultra durable PCI, this like, it, this is basically to support the uh, PCI 5 lane. 
right there. So I'm gonna put this out of the way. Now get ready, because when I flip this over, you guys are gonna be impressed. Uh, Igor, thank you for the gifted subs, my man. And then check that out. Look at that. A am I not, dude, is that not beautiful? So a couple things, number one, Check these out right here. So something that they did, which I'm actually very impressed with, is they actually added latches to every one of their PCI covers. So it's just a simple thing and it just comes right off. And then every single, uh, every single in dot two slot is actually got, actually has the twist. So there's no, there's no um, screws whatsoever. And then we have two one, and here's the second one right here. We have two Gen 5 slots, which is actually super rad. We also have this ultra durable PCIe, um, basically, so it like just to help with supporting with flex for shipping. Uh, it seems to do a little bit better than these plastic ones. And then you also get this beautiful, check this out, this beautiful, I, it's not as nice as the, K, the, the uh, Q latch from, uh, from Asus, but still much easier to basically be able to get in there and unlock uh, your, um, your, uh, your GPU if you have to get it out, which is cool. The other thing too that they also added, which was actually pretty neat, is for people who wanna have screens, check this out. It has an HDMI port right off of the side of the Mobo. So in other words, if you have a second screen that you wanna use, this will actually use the iGPU built into the Ryzen CPU. Uh, and you can use that as for running your secondary screen and all that sort of stuff, which is actually pretty cool. Um, you have two USB 3.2, which is nice. Two USB 2. You have like eight fan headers. So definitely an overkill board, but all in all with the white PCB and everything like that, very, very, very cool. And then the last thing, dude, just, I mean, that is a crap ton, crap ton of IO. I wish it was two USB 3.2 um, or two USB-C, but I mean, still, that's a lot of IO should you need it, which is actually pretty awesome. So very, very pretty board, I just wanna say. Okay, so let's get our let's get our CPU in and all that sort of stuff and go for there. But I wanna show this off because this board is quite nice. <clears throat> Yeah, yo dog, I heard you like USB. Emery, thank you for the sub. Smoke, thank you for the resub, 28 months. Ram clicks, uh, let's do, let's do 98. Let's do 98 today. <laughs> it's, uh, you spelled it wrong, Bernie. That's not how you spell it. I don't, I, I'm, I, is there a reason that I, you misspelled it because I was, because I did it wrong? Because if I misspelled it, that's gonna make me feel bad too. Is there one or two USB 3.2 internal connectors? There is uh, one, one. There's two USB 3 here and here though. So there's one here on the side, side connection, and then there's one here as two. USB 3.2, yes, Gen 2, sorry, there's two of them. You can't see the second one, sorry, it's down here at the bottom. My bad, I had it blocked. Okay, let's do the peel here. Okay, I'm taking the entire thing off here. go. Oh, that peel went not well. Okay, good. <clears throat> uh, this right here, I do, it says THBU4. I'd have to look it up. I don't actually know what that is. I could look it up on here. I don't know if somebody can take a look at it. I'll look. Oh, there we go. Hey, oh, what's up, BMOC? Hello, hello. There we go. Not a big pop, but that's okay. 
Okay, let's throw our NVMe in there. Oh, Thunderbolt 4. Okay, here we go, guys, popping this in. And then again, that beautiful latch system, which, oh wow, that's even easier. Okay, so they've even made this easier. So now it's just got like a little, it's just a little bit. So you just gotta pop it out a little bit. There's not even, God, that, that is really easy for installing your NVMe. And then that clicks on just like that. Nope, oh, forgot my peel. This, however, not as straightforward. There we go. There we go, okay, perfect. Okay, RAM clicks, we said 98. Uh, let me go grab our audio thing, one sec. Shoom State, thank you very much for the uh, thing. So the manual said it's a uh... Gigabyte add-in card, but it doesn't specify after that. Thanks for answering that, BMOC. I can look to see if there's anything in the box. All right, here we go, guys. 98. Maxon, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Devoted Phantom, thank you very much. 30 months, dude. But yeah, it does does appear to be uh, Thunderbolt 4 related as an add-in card hooked up to the motherboard. I just like the HDMI bit. That's pretty cool. There we go. It is weird how far back the uh, USB-C is. It's a little further back, but I mean, not a big deal. Lots of fan hitters, though. Zig PC, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Okay, here we go. Ninety-eight. Beautiful white RAM. 93 guys, I don't think this is gonna do it. It is clicky, but it's not loud clicky. Ninety one guys, it is a negatory on that one. Good solid clicks, but not overly loud. Sergeant Nobody, they're coming up. There's one on there's one on Tuesday, Gamatis one, with a beautiful white 7900 XTX in it. And we have our, right. our 7900 GREs coming in too. Oh, sweet. <clears throat> Mr. Houston, yeah. thank you very much for the resub. What's up? So apparently it works with the so Gigabyte Maple Ridge Thunderbolt 4 add-in card. Oh, okay. A separate separate thing you buy okay so it's not included right okay guys here we go i am going to add a screen to this if you want to save a little money uh you could go with an ak620 non-digital but um actually one thing that's nice about the digital under load because of the screen it actually adds a little bit of uh of a wind tunnel effect, which does a better job in cooling the CPU slightly under uh, uh, under load, which is kind of fun. But yeah. Okay.
That's gonna look really good with all the white, you know what I mean? Okay, just getting all of our cables out. That's definitely a really nice looking whiteboard. Yeah, it is. The B, like I was, but I was telling people, right? Like if you're going to do this, if you were gonna like, if you like this build and you're like, oh, I'd love to mimic it, I would say get the B650 version over the X670. Um, just, to, I mean, it's a hundred dollars less. Um, and I mean, I don't think you need the X670, but there's a lot of cool functions on the X670, especially if you're gonna do like second screen or anything like that. But for a build like what we're building, which isn't like all about like crazy over the top, you know, should be totally, probably just do B650 instead. Do do. Yeah, we put the white on top of it and everything. That should look even better. Okay, here's our AMD stuff. Yeah, I'm actually really excited, guys, because we have like the new Arctic Freezer Three. We have the new Thermal Right Evo. So we have some new, I'm, I'm trying to get these into builds because these are like crazy and expensive coolers that do a miraculous job of cooling. Um, so, but they're going through the review process first. $49 for like a cooler that outdoes like an MA620. What cooler is that? The Thermal Right uh what is it called yeah the, air, the, the edge the the oh, evo the, the new cooler? evo okay yeah. gotcha gotcha yeah we just got yeah, it. the new uh phantom yeah the spirit phantom evo. spirit evo yeah, yeah it's like hard work canucks did a, a 240 millimeter aio roundup and actually found specifically on the am5 platform that the thermal uh, i believe it's their edge 240 aio did really really well like up there with the top of the line and they're only like 50 bucks yeah, dude, they're like, and then like even the Arctic freezer, right? Like I love that there's like these new, like pushing it and then for like so little cost, right? Which makes some of the other stuff go down. Like, so we haven't done the install yet. So it's like some of that is sometimes it's quality of life, right? Like, hey, it's a little easier to install or whatever it was, but still it's hard to argue when it's that inexpensive, like how much quality of life really means to you. Sometimes it means a lot, but still, I mean, it's awesome. We have coolers like that now. Yeah, I'm excited. We're excited to uh, get to test it, and we're going to do another air roundup, as well as we're doing 420s versus 360 roundup right now. So there's a lot of really good content like that that's in 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 the works right now. And we just switched cases, uh, so we, that's why it's taking us longer, is because we switched cases so we could use something that will handle everything, including 420 millimeter AIOs. But hopefully things start getting colder, not hotter. That would be better, you know? You're always gonna have the people that, that wanna spend the extra money and get the you know, top end or the name brands, but it's nice to have that availability for people that want uh, some better cooling on a budget. Yeah, but truth be told, right? Like even sometimes, I think, and I, I think Samsung learned this with NVMe drives is like, having like then even the top brands start to come down in cost because you know because basically they're you know people start to recognize well i don't really need to pay for this you know what i mean and so oh, i for sure and you know in a lot of ways we've even seen that even come into you know come into fact with nvidia right like the 4080 super which i mean you know we've now seen how successful that is when they brought the you know amd essentially had them bring down the cost um, and now that you can't buy them, but still. So I like it across yeah. the board. Price, good, good pricing is always good for customers in the end, especially when they're quality products. Yep, consumers win. That's what we want. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward, we're just gonna make sure it's tight. 
And these stop. So, I mean, you can go until they basically stop, which is super important. You want to make sure you get a good seat on this. Oops. Don't want to strip it, though. So now we're just going to put all this stuff back in the bag and then get our AIO and our, uh, our build and our thing installed here. Okay, we're gonna remove this. Okay, here we go, guys. So now we just gotta get this set. Poor screen on this got scratched up. I thought, I guess we didn't put a cover on it, which kind of sucks. We might have to get another one of these. go. There we go. Okay, we got to put some thermal paste on. Yeah, it looks like dropping down to the B650 version is a uh... You got pretty much the same rear I.O. You're only losing four phases of VRM. You go from Wi-Fi 7 to 6E, um, and then you lose that Thunderbolt header for add-in card. But besides that, I mean, it's pretty much all the, the same. same. Yeah, Wi-Fi 7 is actually pretty awesome. <laughs> like we were playing around with it and like we were getting like a thousand gigabit, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, you know, um, yeah, a thousand megabits per second on download, right? With a Wi-Fi 7 router um, because of that multi-phase with Wi-Fi 7. Um, but I mean, again, super not for everybody. Um, not worth the hundred bucks for most people. Because I mean, I don't, how many people have Wi-Fi 7? Raise your hand if you have Wi-Fi 7. It's actually not that pricey. I don't know what the retail price of this board is. How much is the B650 one, BMOC? I'll have to look it back up. It's uh, the new, the new Wi-Fi 7 is actually pretty close, uh, Andrew. In terms of latency, it's getting there. I don't know if it'll ever get to that level, but it's getting impressive. Yeah, Wi-Fi 7 routers are expensive. They're looking at 220 uh, for the B650. They got a B650E is 280. And then you're only $20 more for the X670 off the B650E version. So oh, that's actually not a whole lot. That's not a whole lot better than I thought. I need a little bit more paste. Quite given enough. I mean, it's priced pretty pretty well, three hundred dollars for the X670 version. Yeah, that's actually a really good price for a whiteboard. Yeah. On top of that. Because I mean, you know, that rear like, I/O is stacked. They could, they could charge a lot for uh, just the white PCB in general. So that's actually pretty nice of Oris to do that. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of the like Steel Legend from Azrock, but that that uh, Oris board with the white actual PCB just looks really good. Like it sets it apart in an all white build for sure. Yeah, we'll be, I'm excited to see what this is gonna look like when we're done. Oh, hey, man, I did a really bad job. I like got it all over the thing. I'm gonna have to clean that up, geez. A <clears throat> Couple days of being sick and all of a sudden you're like a terrible thermal paste spreader. Like took away my skills. Laser you got somebody asking. Thank you very much. What? Sorry. Back your, uh, your your opinion on the contact frame for Intel 14900K. Who did? Um. So uh, Chris, it's a Chris of VH. Yeah, I saw, I saw I saw it right there. Um, it'd be interesting. So you've have you watched the last 14900 builds that we did? Have you watched the last of them? I'd actually I'd actually like to get your opinion, BMOC. Um, 
because we showed that you can get a 14900K pulling a 37,000 Cinebench score that was uh, peaking out at 71, 71 degrees on a 360 millimeter AIO without a contact frame. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a necessity. I think, you know, also is going to depend on, you know, what kind of cooler you're running and case and, and everything like that. But I mean, for the peace of mind, you can usually pick them up, you know, pretty cheap. Yeah, they're not, they're, that's the one thing is they're not expensive. The thing is, is that I think there was a world that people thought they were necessary. And that's, I think that was what I kind of want to see what BMOC saw. Cause BMOC, I, I, BMOC spends a lot of time just thinking about those things. And so a lot of times uh, why I want to hear his opinion is he does a good job of, of thinking through it, right? So for him to say that it's not necessary is, that's actually a pretty big thing. Because before you, I mean, I used to put them on almost all of the, even all of our um, Intel, um, our Intel, uh, oh, what's it called? When we build one commissions, I don't do that anymore. Uh, camera's out of focus. Oh, the camera doesn't look out of focus to me. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if they're necessary anymore. It's just up to you if you want to if you want to install them. I mean, you can pick one up right now for eight ninety nine on Amazon. So, I mean, when I do a lot of my AM five builds, especially my personal ones, I use the contact frame, and they're they're purely, you know, aesthetics really on those. And but I think it just makes it look a lot nicer when I put the. Yeah, we have AM5 ones then, too, yeah. And it just keeps the pace from going down in the in the edges, you know? So, I mean, and the same thing, I mean, I'm paying like eight, nine dollars for it. I mean, it's like if you're, uh, honestly, if you are if you can afford a 14900K, it's almost like, why not use it? But, I mean, it's I, I don't think it's necessary. What's more necessary is doing things like messing with the BIOS and making it, making sure it's appropriately tuned you know what I mean? That's the more important part. But I mean, a contact frame, it's very easy to install. They're not a big deal. Like if you want to do them, and, and I agree, like they, aesthetically, they actually look really nice. Um, and it feels like you're just going that extra step, like getting good thermal paste and all those other things, but it may not do everything that people think it needs to do. Uh, with the 3060, if you were going to choose an Intel CPU, you could do a 13.6. Uh, you could do a 12.6. Um, Either, all of those are pretty reasonable for a 3060, like a normal 3060. You could even do a 12400F if you wanted to save some money. Speaking of, of that, if, if you're looking right now, pay attention to pricing and sales because the 12600KF has gone down as low as like 165 or even like maybe 155, they go down pretty cheap and they're like 220 right now. So um, make sure you, you look at that pricing history uh, and buy them under a decent deal too. Yeah, that's a great point. Again, it's usually like any, any you can do 12, uh, 13, uh, you know, I wouldn't go any higher than a seven. It feels like you're kind of overspending at that point given that you have a 3060, um, but any one of those should be fine. By the way, the one thing I did do, guys, I just want to let you know, I downloaded the Deep Cool software before the stream. So, because I don't know if you guys remember that last time. When... <laughs> that was so funny. Like, we ended up waiting 15 minutes just for that to download. Their, their CDN was so slow. Not this time, guys. Yeah, there we go. That looks, with the all white, you know what I mean? Like, that looks really good with the uh, with the cooler too, you know what I mean? That looks really neat. Man, I'm just I don't know how it got scratched up so easily. Jeez, I don't I don't like. We need to make sure we save our uh, save our plastic covers. We're gonna have to definitely order another one of these. I'm really bummed because these are beautiful coolers, and we got all the headers right here. It's USB three. There's our USB two. I mean our cables. Uh, it's okay, Rip Art. I know you said we. You still are actually going to see a little bit on the edge here, which is actually kind of nice. And I will say there's a little bit of RGB here and here on the on the actual screen, which will also look nice too. So 
Um, the R and there's the underglow from the RGB on the RAM actually looks pretty good too. Uh, T TLE Esquire, TL Esquire, thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate you. What's up, PC Guy Entry? How are you? Okay, so we're just gonna run these because this is gonna this can go right here, and then I'm just gonna run them and make them hide so our our basically our cables are pretty much just hidden. Then Arachnus had asked about, um, it doesn't hurt to add the contact frame. And, and I would just say, um, you do have a slight chance that you can damage something because you're taking that cover off um, where, the, where the pins are, are at. So, I mean, you got to be a little more cautious with that. I always say to go ahead and put the CPU in first. Yep. That way you're protecting those pins. Um, and then you do have to be cautious when you, you twist those screws in to make sure that you just put them down just enough because you can put too much torque and uh, cause some issues with the CPU and memory controller stuff if you put too much pressure on that CPU. It's pretty, it's actually, it's, it's a little bit, yeah, like I said, the instructions are pretty clear. If you follow the instructions and you don't rush, which I think that's most of our feedback to most people when they're doing PC builds, if you take your time and don't be afraid to read instructions, you'll probably be fine. You've seen me do it, what, what, five or six times alone just on our, on my channel. And then there's, you know, if you always have questions, head over to discord.gg slash Robitech. You know, we have lots of text there who can help walk you through and make sure you don't do anything dumb, you know? I mean, we're honestly spoiled now because you think about, I mean, you're, you're a little bit older than me. And when, when we come up doing PC stuff, you know, like most of it, you either had to read an actual book, you know, or magazine. There wasn't all this, you know, videos now. Now with, with YouTube and, and stuff, you can pretty much almost find a video that walks you through. But like manuals anything. are, you know, really underrated because most manuals, and you, you'll find a bad manual here and there, but a lot of these companies are putting out very good documentation on, on step by steps how to. Put these products together so yeah if you just take your time read the manual uh you'll be surprised how easy a lot of this stuff actually is actually there's companies that also hire people like me to go make step-by-steps <laughs> for them and you guys will see uh you'll see my ugly mug on some of these too so because they know how good you know doing stuff like that is but yes you're right like they want to make sure that it's really easy and that there's little to no confusion you know I don't know how much time it would take you, but I, I tell you some a video that we've been um, using a lot lately is uh, display driver uninstaller. Oh yeah. Um, so I don't know, you know, how much time it would take you to put a quick video like that together for us to start recommending uh, that you actually did. Okay. But yeah, I think that would Not be something long. that would get used um, quite often. Can you send an email to Damien and then he'll write a script and we'll get it filmed right away. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Damien at Roby Tech. And say like, hey, Roby says that we need to make this video. And then he'll make it. We'll make it. I love it when you guys recommend videos. See, what I'm doing right now is just hiding all these cables in here. We can, by the way, we can do zip tie count. Why not? I'm working on that now. Oh, we've used a number now. At least two. Okay, guys. Motherboard's ready. We have our cable ready for routing. Our, all our other cables are hidden. Get this out of the way. External test, what do you mean, ZigPC? We've actually already done all that stuff. Riddick, drop in the five gifted subs. Thank you, my man. 
You are an officer and a gentleman. What's up, kill man? Yo, what's up? My upgrade went smoothly, so I'm happy now. Never come across your channel before. I watch a lot of build videos, so glad YouTube. Welcome, James. Yeah, and you're watching it live. So you can interact and ask questions and say your thinking. We love to hear people, uh, we love to hear people uh, tell us what they think. Okay, so we got all of the build in. Our MOBO is ready. Well, Riddick's been well, tier Riddick three for 29 months. Well, 15 more. Dude, wait, what? Did I read that wrong? So he did yes, he a tier three for 29 months, and then he dropped 15 more. Wow, Riddick. Thank Man's you, a Riddick. legend. He is a legend. Uh, 6,000 megahertz. Uh, 6,000 megahertz. We have 48 gigs. So just for a lot of people, because there's over 450 people here now. Um, parts list. Um, we have a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, uh, a Gigabyte X670E Proist, Aorus Pro X. We have the Gigabyte Aero NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti, uh, Patriot Viper VP4300 Lite 2 terabyte NVMe drive. We have a DDR5 6000 mega transfer, 48 gigs, by the way, just because it's fun to use 48 gigs. Uh, Be Quiet Dark Priest Pro 901 in white, the Deep Cool AK620 Digital in white, and then we've, we're actually going to use the Asus Tough 750 watt gold PSU. Which, uh, BMOC, can you also write Glenn? Because he has your Tough uh, PSU for you. Okay. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Oh, Tom said to check your email. Oh, okay. Check my email. I will check it now. You've got mail. I used to have that ringtone. Yo, how did that? How did that uh, upgrade go? I it went actually relatively smoothly. Um, Thank you, uh, Tom. I, I was a little concerned at first with the uh, cooler, but um, I was double checking everything. It, it just didn't want to go down the the way I was putting it, so I, I reversed it. Uh, now I have. Let's see. It's one. Two, three, four, five, seven ARGB fans. Okay, hold on, guys. We're going to get to this real quick. Yeah, I, I've used uh, two of the new Liquid Freezer 3s, and I really like them on AM5, but it is a pain in the butt to get that second screw. Like, you have to, it's got a leaf spring set up, and you have to put one in. And then you have to do the other one, and you have to put a considerable amount of force to get that second one down. Yeah, the yeah, cable the, bar. The period is... Go ahead. Sorry. Somebody was talking okay. about the cable bar that we have in this case, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, guys. So this is the Dark Base 901. Sorry to interrupt you guys. I'll let you guys get back. I just, I just got off the phone. So my bad. Uh, this is the Dark Base 901. Uh, brand new case from Be Quiet, um, which uh, you can do inverse if you want to. Um, we're not going to do that, but if you could, you can absolutely flip this whole case around. There's a lot of uh, options for here. We're going to have our full review on this actually quite a bit later uh, that we're going to be working on. But the cool thing is this is now in white. It also has interchangeable uh, front and back panels, so you can actually do things like add airflow and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, very, very cool case. Uh, also, very beefy. And it's got like some nice, it's got a neat little RGB bar in it. And on top of that, it comes with three white silent wing fans, which is also very nice. The one thing I really like about Be Quiet cases is they do what they say they're going to do, which is be white, uh, be quiet. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is you can see on the front here, I'll, I'll show you with the side camera here. You can see it a little bit. Um, even though the, so the front is solid, you can see just how big these areas are for it to pull in air. So even if you were to keep the front with the with the more silent front, which is what we have on here now, there's still a lot of place to pull air from. And then the other thing too is the back. Also, if you were to put rear fans in, if you wanted to, also is perforated, which means you're gonna get good amounts of airflow from the back as well. So, and all the cables inside look to be white, which is also really neat, which I, I always appreciate. So I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit and then you guys can finish the, continue your conversation. Sorry about that. It is a big, it is a big boy. I feel bad for interrupting Kilt Man and uh, they were talking. It's okay, boss. It's your stream. <laughs> but still, I yeah, like that you guys hang out. We're just filling that time in, you know? 
Okay, so we're just gonna pull this stuff off real quick. Ooh, nice thumb screws. They are, ha they are captive. Ooh, look at, see, and then you get this, look at this. Look at that, guys. Look at that, like that nice, quiet padding, which is good. This is almost as big as my half X. Dude, it's a big case. This is a big case. I gotta send, my daughter is in need of food, so I have to send her friend money. I'm doing the same thing right now. About to order me some bao. That sounds good, actually. Okay. All right, let's finish stripping this, sorry. Looking at the back though, check this out. Look at the cable management stuff that they have for this, guys. Look at, they're like, dude, this is crazy. I mean, little bit, I mean, wow. Lots of room for storage if we wanted to do it. And then these, these like channel things are pretty bonkers. Wow, okay. Okay. There's so much room for activities. I know, so much room. Dude, I love that. <laughs> okay, um, let's figure this out. Um, it doesn't look like it works the way I think it is. Okay, this is where sometimes it's okay to read the manual. One thing we can do, we can pull this off. Yeah, four USB, which means we actually have the support on this board for that, which is actually kind of pretty cool. And lots of room for activity. I mean, like, again, this could be a case that you could grow into if you really wanted to. It looks like it just pulls. Oh, okay, so it does, it just pulls, okay. Sometimes you just gotta be brave, you know? <laughs> That's also how you break things. By the way, B-Mock and Killman, do you know what this thing does support? What you is know that? what this down here is? is it's it a for banana a drawer? CD ROM. You can put a B, you can put a CD drive in this. Absolutely, <laughs> you can. You can put a CD-ROM. So if you were wanting that CD-ROM, you're good. You can add it just right down here. Um, yeah, if you're uh, if you're if you really needed that, put your Blu-ray disc player in there. Yeah, put your Blu-ray player in there. You're good to go. <clears throat> your Blu-ray burner. Okay, so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move. They, they do have all the front fans installed already and ready to go. Um, I don't know how this, this is, this looks like they're connected. I'm gonna figure out this out here. So we might have to do some cable management for the case. I am gonna move the fans up. Yeah, so these are the fans. How does this work? Okay, so there's a fan hub. Okay, let me, I'll show you what I'm gonna look, I'll show you what I'm looking at here, guys, because I don't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sense of it here. So going inside here, it looks like the fans, which these are the fans, are actually connected up here to this. And then there's another cable that comes off of this. And these are, yeah, those are fan. There's actually a front fan hub. So you could do three fans in the front if you wanted to. And then there's a separate connection off. So you, all of your connections are right here, up here at the front, which is actually pretty crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these up and then we'll cable manage them. But yeah, that's actually pretty neat there. And then it, it actually has like a little hole to hide this. And then you can see there's also more sound padding up here as well. So, I mean, dude, this case has got lots of room for, like they said, activities. And then these storage things are, you just like. So there's another one up there for uh, the 360 or whatever you put on top. Yep, yep, Look there is. Look above that motherboard tray, there's another oh, one. Oh yeah, there. there's more, you're right. There's another one right here. So you can do three, so you have another hub. And it's got its own little proprietary connection to basically hook into the motherboard. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Oh, I love, it's fun doing case discovery, isn't it? <laughs> it is. We're case discovering, guys. We're spelunking with Be Quiet. Okay, let's go ahead and move these fans up. I'm gonna move them up a little bit. So they're more, I don't need to add another fan. You can do 340 millimeters if you want to. I'm just gonna move them up. So I'm gonna get direct, I'm gonna line them up so they get direct airflow to the air cooler. And then we have direct airflow for the GPU. Um, but I don't need to add a third. 
Um, because it's not, we're not adding RGB. We're gonna stick with the Silent Wings, which are great fans. Wow, look at, dude, look at this, holy moly. Look at the size of this fan screw, guys. That thing is like, that thing could hold in a two by four. It's the opposite of the one from Corsair. That is a big fan screw. <laughs> it's kind of like the ones I have for the Cooler Master fans I got. Um, except mine, it just literally the threads at the tip. Oh, hold on. I just noticed that this, well, I, I guess I could take this off and do it that way, but yeah, I don't need to. You, you just, it looks, whoa. Oh, that's a clip. Okay. Good to know. It comes with spacers. I wonder why. I guess it's just to keep it off the front so you can pull airflow from the back. So they, they actually created, they gave you spacers to create that room so that way your fan uh, ha actually isn't right up against the edge so it pulls more air from the back, I guess? I don't know. I'm not really sure what the spacers are for. Be Quiet is German, it's a German engineering company, right? So they don't do anything with for no reason. Hey, GSX Therapy, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Appreciate you. Mikey P, thank you very much. The steam has helped me decompress, relax so much over the past 26 months that I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you for the excellent distraction and knowledge. Dude, Mikey, that made my day, dude. Did you guys hear that? That's awesome. Blazing216, thank you very much as well for the sub. That is a very, very, um, that is a very kind thing to say, and I'm really glad. So, uh, Eunice, no, nobody reads the comments. Just kidding, yes, we read them. I always love that joke, it never gets old. Anybody read the comments? Nope. Uh, wouldn't use an optical drive, but the case is nice. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's options, right? Believe it or not, they're actually really big in Japan, which is where the majority of those sell. And they, they want them in Japan. Like, Japan just loves their optical drives for some reason. Okay. So I'm gonna move this up a bit. Probably like just make it even. I will say like the putting these in though with the space. Oops, the spacer goes on the other side with the spacer. Not so straightforward. I mean, I understand the spacer, but the spacer is. Not straightforward to put in. I wonder if it's easier if you're laying it down. I don't know. I should probably be using the wow stick for this. I feel like I'm missing a wow stick moment here. We're just gonna make sure this is like lined up with the back. I might move this a little bit more, but I, I can move it once the spacers and stuff are in. I mean, at least the at least the fan like it's easy to get them in, which is kind of cool. There we go. Let's grab our wow stick. <clears throat> hey, it's Nathan. Thank you very much, Cassid. Thank you very much as well, Cassid Seven. Something kind of random. The PDF manual for this case is 168 megabytes. Yeah. The what? Oh, yeah, it's big. Yeah, they got some high-res pictures in there. This case is actually really impressive. How much is it? I don't remember off the top of my head. You got a question, Roby, from chat um, for some high-end editing and streaming. Would you opt for a 14900K? Yes, 
Um, we've seen pre, well, here it depends. DaVinci Resolve actually works pretty well with both now, um, but we have seen faster render times uh, with Adobe and Intel still. Um, so yes, I would do, if you're gonna do high-end streaming and editing, then an Intel seems to be the better choice right now still. Depending, unless you wanna go DaVinci, then AMD actually works really well too. And we've tried both. We've done Threadripper, uh, we've done, uh, we have 7950Xs and all that sort of stuff, but Adobe just, I mean, they're slow. So, I'm Jonas, sure. what was Jonas's question? I, he, he's trying to, dude, I'm also trying to build a PC, so I can't always be reading the chat. So I'm sorry if you feel like I'm not, a, not answering your question. Okay. I could only find one listing for this case and it's at like $320. Yeah, I can't find the, the MSRP. One. Oh, the black one? Or is it the white yeah. one? Yeah, they, I, know, I know the white one's not available yet. think I mean there's no way it can be it couldn't be straight yeah it's straight okay lucky this one I just have to loosen okay so we're just putting this up so it blows right to the GPU there you go. So we're getting direct airflow for the GPU and now direct airflow for the CPU air cooler. That's what I was adjusting real quick. Now we're gonna just fix this, fix the, um, the cable management and then we'll get to the rest of our build. I, guys, this build is not gonna take a ton of time. It's the one thing that's kind of fun about air coolers, but I like when you have really good fans, it just feels like the thing that you want to do is air cooling. And air cooling is getting more and more reasonable too. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, with the A115 and now with the, the, um, the uh, Thermalrite, uh, oh man, I can never remember the name. It's not, the one I just talked about, the Evo um, that can cool. Phantom like, Spirit. Yeah, the Phantom Spirit Evo, that 263 TD, 263 watt TDP of cooling capacity on that. That's a 14.7, that's a 7700X. 7, like you don't necessarily need an AIO for some of these like you need, you used to, right? Um, and it's, it's just simplicity too, which is kind of cool. It just, I like when people have options and air coolers do add less failure points. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they're, they're not, I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's just good that you have options. It's like Bmox said in, in 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 the beginning, the customer wins. So he was wanting to know uh, what would be your choice for the cooler to use with that fourteen nine hundred K. He's doing a white build, by the way. Uh, expected Americans would be able to pronounce Jonas. Oh, is jo is Jonas not right? I thought it was. Oh, good. I'm glad. Uh, uh, it says, so 40, uh, multi-core, uh, so you can do a 360 millimeter AIO if you want to save some money. Um, honestly, the new, the new King, and we haven't tested this yet, so I don't have the data for myself, but it's not like I don't trust the people who do have this data, is right now the Arctic, the Liquid Freezer 3s, if you want to save some money. Uh, other ones that are absolutely great are anything from Deep Cool, Deep Cool. Um, their, um, theirs are all also very awesome. Um, you like, but a 360 millimeter AIO is fine. If you want it, we are testing right now because I'll be honest, the, we, tr we tried the, uh, Asus. I'm trying to find a better way to get at this. I think this is going to be the better way. We tried the Asus 420 millimeter AIO and, um, it didn't perform. I mean, honestly, we saw 360 millimeter AIOs that performed better. So we're trying to determine if a 360, if you need to go higher, like if you get a benefit from that that higher, that's, it makes sense, right? But we're testing all of them, including the Liquid Freezer 3 420 is in our list as well. But if you, you're gonna be fine with the 360 millimeter AIO, um, just make sure you set up Intel stock settings and then you can do your own overclocking, which should be fine.
The, yeah, the Lee and Lee Galahad 3, 2 LCD is fantastic. Uh, even with the Infinity fans, it was probably one of the best, uh, the best 360 millimeter AIOs we tested. The Ryujin 3, if you want to spend a little bit more from Asus, was also very good. Um, the uh, H150 uh, uh, IQ, if you want to go something simpler, but you're paying for IQ at that point in time, like you have lots of really good options in that range right now. Anything you guys would add to that? I oh, you hit some, some good coolers. Uh, I think price to performance, the, the EK ones right now are, are pretty good. There you uh, go. I really like the new the new Arctics, but they're the Intel uh, frame that comes with it. It's kind of kind of meh. So, uh, but the good news is the old Arctic freezers are on crazy sales. Um, but the 360s usually um, not been discounted like the other ones. But the 280s, the 420s have been like crazy priced recently. Sorry, guys. I'm focused on trying to get this zip tie in here. To make this cleaner but but yeah i've had had a lot of luck with the deep cool i think the the deep cool uh, lslt uh, are very very good too the they are really they're good great, pump in there and they're really good they're just good prices oh yeah yeah i'm really excited because we actually have the direct die one coming from ek so there's going to be some fun there i mean i grabbed the ls uh, 520 from from uh, I think it was Newegg for like sixty-seven dollars or something like that, oh, or two forty millimeter, good. and used it on a on a, a seventy-seven hundred, you know, no problem. We're just cleaning. Tom up the subscribed case. forty-two months. Whoa, Tom, forty-two. Hey, yo, easy. Thank you very much for the thing. El Solo Doctor, I love that. Use the new Arctic Freezer 3 White Edition. That's what El Solo Doctor says. Tom's almost reached his age and uh, prime month subbed. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's fighting words right there, Tom. Oh, Eternal Rage, 45 months. Whoa. So, well, Cole's been, Cole's been with me since, uh, Cole's been with me since Mixer days. So, that doesn't surprise me. Um, oh, one last thing. I'm getting the Aorus Pro X White Mobo. Should I respect the 5600 Max Intel and mentions or a sweet spot RAM for four? Dude, you can, like, you can do 7,000. You, like, honestly, you should do at least 6,000 um, at a minimum. But you can do much faster on Intel, and now even on AMD. But dude, you can do like if you if you're doing high end rendering, uh, RAM helps. Fast RAM helps. So seven thousand would be fine. So ours, I think ours, we have all of our editors use seven thousand mega transfer RAM. Hey, okay, that's much cleaner. I just I hope that stays there. I hope I think I'm caveat gonna... on that. If you're if you're gonna do that, make sure you get a Z790 board. And not a 690 because yes, you're yes. gonna have better RAM compatibility. Well, Oris, they have their new Pro Z, uh, Intel ones, so they're and they're all Z790s. So the non K14 gen have the old memory controller too, so as long as you have a K processor and a Z790, you might be able to do 7200 just fine. Okay, guys. Now what we're doing now that we've got that kind of cleaned up. I don't know why I set this up. I should have put the MOBO in there, but now I'm going to take off just these little kind of little small things and just get them ready. I do want to take, look at this though. I'm going to show you guys here on the back, the roaming camera, um, cause I got it up. Look at these cables. I just got to say, man, these cables, I mean, uh, like you're looking, I can see why this case is exp as expensive as it is. Because, I mean, even look at this, guys, like all like full white on the USB 3.2. There's two of them. Full white on the SATA, front panel, single front panel header, white on the USB C with the white inside too. So again, really, really great attention to detail 
and really making sure. And by the way, look at all of the white cables actually are all the same color white, which is actually pretty cool. And I know that was something that was really important to the team at Be Quiet, which is why it took them so long to release their fans and stuff is because they were taking the time to perfect how that they could match the whites, which is probably one of the hardest things to do. Um, and so we have a really even um, white aesthetic across the entire thing. Oh, we had another question from uh, Space Cadet 420. Like that name. Doing by the, way. the PC build, they've they've already got an Arc A770. It appears, and they're wanting to pair it. Asking about a 14700 KF. Okay, I mean, there's no problem with that. I mean, it's a little bit. I mean, your CPU is a little bit of overkill for that GPU, but um, yeah, that's that's it's a fine combination. Yeah, so the driving factor is going to be more what you're going to do with it, you know, what's your goal for the PC. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, that's actually a really good point, BMOC, is that a lot of times, I, I always think, like, is that a fine pairing? Absolutely. But yes, he's right. Like, do you need a 14700 KF? What are you going to do with it from a gaming standpoint and all that sort of stuff? Or like, where you could see a lot of benefit is if you're going to do gaming and streaming, a 14700 KF with some video editing stuff as well um, would be a great investment. If you're just going to do gaming, uh, and you're gonna do, well, A770, you can do 1440p. So, I mean, you're gonna be using mostly the GPU, uh, and not. but if you're gonna do 1080p, then a 14.7 is gonna get you some extra power there. So. Yeah, sticks with right now too, though with Z790, uh, and with the new X670 refreshes, the four is getting better. It's still not great. Oops, I almost didn't peel the back. Oh, I almost didn't peel, yeah. I saw a peel that I didn't do, sorry. Okay, sorry. I know you guys didn't get to see the peel, but I didn't want to drop the motherboard in a bad way. I mean, I am 560, 400, still gonna be hit or miss. I've still only got it on two motherboards um, and they've both been uh, Taki variants from ASRock. I've got the 6400 stable. Um, most every other board that I've tested, I've been able to get 6200. But yeah, the APUs are a different uh, thing, and I've actually bought an 8600G to mess around with. So I'm gonna do some RAM overclocking with it probably this weekend. Well, this has got two pegs instead of one, instead of only one. Wow, guys, look at that. Look at that all white in there. Wow. That is, you almost can't tell there's a motherboard there. You almost there. can't tell there's, yeah, you almost can't tell there's a motherboard in there. That is crazy. Wow, that looks really nuts. You can definitely see the subtle differences in the white though, like the white in this, like the whites point out better, but luckily this fan actually goes, the, the cover looks better with the other ones. It'd be interesting to put Silent Wing 3s on this just to make the color match if you wanted to, but this is a 120, so I'd have to have 120s. Blends in really well. Okay, uh, by the way, I am i don't know where the accessory box is. Do you guys think this is it? You think this is the accessory box? It's pretty big. <laughs> it's just like, the, 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 the whole case was an accessory? <laughs> It's just like, wow, that is a big box. I, I, I wanted to open this. I wanted to open this with you guys here because I was like, the suit box, nice. I like it. Um, it's the Gigabyte Aorus Pro X670. Okay, so here is all of the accessories for it. I thought, whoa. So this is the replacement front panel. So you could you could actually have the front panel be, which I'm gonna switch to. This is so if you wanna have airflow come up from the bottom, if we had it a third fan. This is, I thought there was, I thought there was like a thing for the GPU, for the, the GPU thing, but I don't see that in here. The GPU power cable. Okay, so the, 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 by the way, the screws are not in this. So this is the accessories minus the screws. So 
So where are the screws? I didn't even look for them inside the case. Well, they're not in there. Uh, I don't have screws, guys. I have like no screws in the accessories box. I'm, maybe I missed them. I'll look again. I'll look in the box. Maybe there's another box of accessories. I might need to go look in the box. I'm gonna go look in the box real quick, guys, just to make sure. There was a second smaller box that is usually tied to the top radiator mount. Top radiator mount. I'm gonna be careful. It might be, oh, it might be downstairs. Let me go look, I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, it's an optional accessory. You don't need the screws. It just holds it via magic. What Gorilla Glue is for. Okay, I found it. It's not called accessories. It's called part box. Okay, so this is where it's got like the cool things like this. This is so you can run and hide your GPU power cable, which we're gonna play with. And there is our fan, all of our screws and stuff, okay. Found it. Dude, this thing has got a lot of stuff. Part box. The other part is the accessory box. Not to be mixed with the part box, guys. Hey guys, we're at 165 of 250 YouTube likes. So let's go ahead and finish those likes, guys. So I, I'm, I'm actually really excited about using this. So what this does is this is like an anti-sag bracket plus, so it's magnetic. And what it does is it, where the GPU is, like you can run your 16 pin and everything there so it's all hidden. And then you also get the sag bracket so you get a, like a really clean look, which should look good with the arrow. So we're gonna play with this too. Nifty neato, Danny DeVito. Okay. Um, Okay, let's get our screws here. The so Space Cadet came back and asked you what would be the best CPU with that A770 that you wouldn't consider overkill. I, I, I mean, honestly, a 14.6 would, I, I don't know. I, it, what are you gonna do with it? Like, is it more than just gaming? I don't know, I think a 14.6, I don't know, BMOC, BMOC Kiltman Org, thoughts? What I'm currently using on the, the PC I'm using at, as we speak is a 14600K and an A770. Yeah, it's it's a good, it's a great, it's a great um, combo, but I always like to get other people's opinions. There you go. I'd say a 14.6. I mean, you just look at the pricing. You're not, I mean, a 13.6, 14.6 are about same performance. Uh, you can save a little money with a 12, 12.6, 12, 12600KF, uh, you know. Yeah, which you could spend on more storage or something like that if you really wanted to. And then it's going to depend too, you know, how long you plan on using it. 
because you know 14700 k kf wasn't wouldn't be bad if you're planning on keeping it and maybe you can upgrade that gpu later and keep the cpu yeah because the cpu can actually you can use all the way up to 4k because the gpu ends up being the more important thing uh robitech i'm considering the 7800 x3d cpu for streaming in hd and playing 2160 triple a titles i'm also running two monitors one at 14 pd for multitasking with tabs spotify and discord with seven. yes you have no problem 7800 x3d would do that fine you got no issues whatsoever there should have done white screws that they could have done that i mean not that the black's gonna look i mean there's lots of black still they kind of blend in with everything else so yeah yeah, Raxness is absolutely right. Your your CPU is not, your CPU, are just if you're gonna stream and play games, especially AAA games, there's a lot of games that really love that 3D V cache. Um, and remember, a lot of games are optimized for AMD now because of what AMD owns in terms of the console space, so. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to be worried. And, you know, as long as you got a modern eight-core CPU, you're going to be able to do uh, gaming and streaming just fine. Uh, specifically, most of the time, you're going to be using the GPU for the encoder anyway. So, um, you got to realize too, like a lot of people are like, "Oh, the six-core CPUs aren't enough anymore." And you got to realize with with the IPC increases uh, with each new generation, each one of those cores can do more. So, uh, um, an eight-core CPU now isn't directly related to a core cpu when they first came out like a 9900k it's still those a cores can do a lot more now than what that could uh somebody asked is a 14 does a 14th gen play well with a 6950 yes if they, they they play fine and it and your your uh your, i mean this the gpu it's it's gonna need upscaling it's gonna need up resing or uh up resing technology to play 4k Understand that most of the 30 series and 6000 series weren't ideal 4K GPUs. So. If your target is only 4K 60 FPS, that's about as difficult to drive as a 2K 144 monitor though. If you have one of the expensive ones like an LG C3 where you can do 4K 120, getting a bigger GPU definitely helps getting closer to 120 FPS at 4K. But I mean, the CPU is the CPU is not the CPU is not as important on a 4K gaming rig as people think, because the CPU doesn't get used all that much. It's all the GPU at that point in time. But yes, they play well. They play fine. AMD and Intel play fine together. Okay, right, guys, that's looking really good. So we're gonna pull this through. Let's go and hook up all our front panel connectors. Um, make sure this looks super clean. And then we're gonna move on to, well, actually all we have is like PSU. We don't have a whole lot left. I forgot when you when you put it, this is like essentially your AIO and you saw how easy it was to install. So there's not a whole lot left to install here. So let's go to side view here. Move it up. What's up, Gorax? I really do like that, uh, sorry. I really do like this, this right here because it makes it easy to kind of hide cables popping in. So let's start, uh, let's start routing things now. The one thing is that this, we want to make sure these cables don't show through at the bottom. So. We'll use a lot oh, of I got these. a hard question for you, Ruby. What's that? We got somebody that wants to know the best GPU to pair with the Ryzen 5 8500G. The best GPU? Yep, that's what they asked. Well, okay, so given the 80, I mean, you are gonna see some limitations there. So I wouldn't go any higher than a like a 7800 or a 4070 anything below that's going to be fine um because you're like i mean your your gpu your, your cpu is definitely going to be 
the limiting factor there. You're gonna be, I mean, you're looking at 1440p or 1080p gaming, I guess, at that point in time. I mean, dude, that's a really, actually, that is a very hard question. Um, Sorry to I mean, interrupt, but basically I thought that it was limited to like four lanes on the slot, so you're really limiting the GPU at that point. Oh, I see, I, we haven't, because I haven't had one, I haven't got to play with it all that much. So if you're looking- Yeah, I honestly wouldn't be trying to pair a GPU with that but, at all, honestly, yeah. I mean. I mean, you could it's put one of those like things a 2060. You're <laughs> for the onboard video, you know, if you're, if you're, unless you already bought the thing and you're stuck with it and you don't have an option, you know, I would, I would, I would pick a different CPU if you're getting a dedicated graphics card. I mean, the iGPU on most of the Ryzen, the 5000 series is more than good enough for anything extra you might need. Now, that is actually a really, sorry, I did not know that. Thank you for, thank you for letting me know that, uh, um. The 86 and 8700 G are limited to eight lanes. So the max you want to do there is like a 7600 or 4060 Ti, because those cards are limited to eight lanes on the PCI slot. But like BMOC said, I mean, honestly, if, I mean, I, I'm assuming because that's those, that's like brand new. If you can drop, if you can switch to, if you can get that, like return it, may not be a bad idea. Yeah, I think the price point for those is probably enticing to a lot of people because they're looking at AM5 for like 180 bucks, but you're, you're honestly better off spending that money if you're going to get a dedicated GPU and get a, like a 7600. It's unfortunate I couldn't write, route that the right way. There's not long enough cable. Okay, so we've hooked up our USB. We're gonna hook up our, I think we have a fan kitter over here, which I think I'd rather use on this side, yeah. So we're gonna hook up our side fan on the side here, and I'll show you the routing on the back. Wow, okay, unless I do that. Come over to the other side and hook that up. We need, Sergeant Nobody says, Pig Radio, he says we need a, an air cooler song. I don't know a good air cooler song. AIAIO just works so well with Old McDonald. We had a question about 8000G series. Um, yes, they do support AV1 encoding. Yeah, they do. With their integrated GPU. I did know that. Well, they almost, it's almost like they don't, it's like they did not give you a very long front panel header. It's like they want to run it from the side, which is interesting. Um, okay, we have two more fan headers here. And I can run to the side here. These are for the front fans. So there's our another front fan or front fan. Oh, that, I bet you actually that's just probably to the front fan mount. So that should be fine. <laughs> to the to the hub. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna run our USB 3.2. Here, we have two, one right there, 
Then one that can go to the bottom here as well. There we go, okay, cool. Charlie by day, thank you very much. Daxed, thank you very much for the subs as well, guys. Six away from a $100 new A gift card being unlocked. Oh, that would be a little bit harder, but actually works pretty well. There we go. Clean. Wow, this cable. I gotta get that, I gotta get that up. That's gonna drive me nuts. I don't like it when cables are visible, like that visible. Okay, we got one more cable to kind of get up and taken care of here, which is our USB 3.2. I'll be honest guys, the cable management on this is actually gonna be pretty straightforward as well. Okay, USB 3.2, and I'll show all these, I'll zoom in and show all these here in a minute. Nope. I feel like I have a 50-50 chance on those and every time I choose wrong. Okay, I think that's all my front panels. Everything else is SATA. So uh, just to walk you guys through what I connected, which is like the easiest thing is just to do it this way. So going here, so we have, this is front, this is our fan hub from the back. This is our rear fan. USB-C, our first USB 3.2 front panel header, which by the way, this is actually pretty short, so it kind of had to run down from this thing. We have our second USB 3.2. This is our USB from our, uh, our air cooler. And then we have our HD audio. And then up here, you already saw me connect. This is RGB for the uh, cooler and then our CPU as well. So that's all of the front panel connections. And because this board has two USB 3.2, we actually have support for it. So we're gonna be able to use all the front panel connections and everything like that. But yeah, there you go, all hooked up. Now we're just gonna clean it up, make it look good. Yeah, it, it, you're right, it does look ridiculously good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on this mess. Just make sure that you just can't see it. You gotta make this table pretty low just to work at it here. Okay, so. This is interesting. Should I have gone around on this? This is, I, I, there's not gonna be anything I can do about this. Okay. So what I'm working on right now is just getting these cleaned up. Case is so big, I think we need to drop a 4090 in here. Dude, this case is really big. Well, I was trying to build a build that like maybe you know that you're gonna get into something a little bit later. In this case, you can grow into it is kind of where my my head was when I chose the parts for this one. Um, so something that's like, it might be something that it's like, hey, I start with this, but yeah, as I get further along, I can absolutely put the biggest components in this. I think the top, I think you can do a 420. I don't know, what's the cooler capacity at the top? Does anybody know? 
org. It looks like 420 in the front for sure. I'm assuming 420 in the top. Give me one second. Do yeah, the front, all, it, all it says is the front can fit the 420. Okay. It might be only a 360 at the top. I mean, honestly, finding top-mounted 420 cases is still hard. So I'm going to cheat a little instead of unplugging my cable. Gonna... Which one are you using in your uh, testing? For what? For the 420 cooler. We're using the Fractal the big giant fractal. We were going to use the, we were going to use the, um, the um, PA602, but it had some limitations in terms of top mounting 420s. So. I thought that would work, but it didn't. Early remove that for no reason, guys. I just showed you you can remove it. That's what I did. I, that was my whole purpose. I'm just kidding. I did that to try and not have to unplug it and then ended up having to unplug it anyway. And then I don't know what I did with my fan, my screws for this. Where did I put the screws that I just removed? They're black. Um, top is 360. I usually put them on the mountain. I did not do that this time. On the case, bottom hard drive cages. No, those are, I don't see, I put the screws somewhere. What did I do with the screw? Oh, I really did put them so, oh, there's one. I heard another one fall. Dorian, the critic, if you want to go onto the Discord um, and get with the House of Tom, he can help you out with some laptop deals. Yeah, he can. Well, I really just need to be better. I was that was that was called not being, not being um, disciplined, guys. Should have been disciplined on that and done the right thing, and I didn't. And this is now this is me paying the price. When you always put your screws on a magnetic mat, and I didn't do that, and now I can't find the Bloomin' screw, and I heard it fall. <clears throat> I know I have spares, but I think I screwed up, yeah. <sighs> Oh shoot, and I pulled that out like I didn't want to. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's get that in. Yeah, Rackson, it can fit three 140 fans on top, but it can't fit the 420 AIO. And that, that's actually a pretty typical thing. And the reason they have that problem is because they can't, usually AIOs have a little bit of extra rooms. So they're not quite 420 exactly. And that's what ends up being the limiting factor there. Yeah, you might even find a little bit of uh, inability to fit that, that extra spot where the tubes come down on the rad or maybe even the drop down to fit the thickness of the radiator and the fans together when you're getting to the top VRM on the motherboard. They did not give me any spare. Oh, maybe this is them. This might be spare accessory screws. 
We'll see. That looks like one. Okay. There we go. Okay, luckily they gave me some spare accessory screws, so rip, just be more diligent than I was. Totally set those down and then didn't remember where I put them. Okay, so now we got this. So what I'm working on right now is just running this cable down because I'm like, this is, this is gonna be fine. I'm just basically hiding this other cable. Wow, 102 guys, Pixel Pusher, Sergeant Nobody dropping six gifted subs. And we are on our way to 150 now. So we're at 102. There we go. So we're just working on our cable management real quick. Just to make sure this continues to look nice. I just realized that I think I did. Guys, I just put this in backwards. This is not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, yeah. Maybe I didn't. I feel like it should go this way. There we go. Because you want to hide the cables. Okay, we're just getting this, making sure that, yeah, just getting, this case is big enough that I have to like move around it to use it to get to everything. It's kind of funny, right? Like I'm like having to like, I can't do everything from like a single position on my bench like I normally can. This just gives you an idea of like how much, how big this case really is. All right, cool. So there, take that takes care of that. So now I've got all that, that one cable hidden. That was all for one cable, by the way. I do not like that I have to do this, but I don't have a long enough USB, so there's nothing I can do about that. Okay, and again, this is where there's a little bit of patience because you learn, oh, I've routed this USB-C cable kind of around the wrong way. Reroute it down. We put it in here. Here we go. Okay, so now our cables are a better run. Okay, so that takes care of this. Now this, you basically have to run under this. Oh no, it just goes, okay.
There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. That holds those. And those are now hidden. We just want these to be right angles too. Oh shoot, there's an RGB cable. Didn't see that, which is, which we're gonna have to plug in. Okay, so then, what I'm doing right now is just getting our other cables kind of in and secure, and then we'll work on this RGB cable here. Okay, so now we need some zip ties just to finish this now. And this is easier to do from the other side. As weird as that sounds. Okay, one more zip tie, and then we'll have all of the main, kind of the main components zip cable managed here. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. There's a little bit of exploration with any new cases. You just kind of figure out where you're gonna put stuff, you know? How you're gonna manage it, how you're gonna figure that stuff out. And it's a lot of figuring it out on the fly on a show, right? Because I want you guys, when I put with a new case, to get my, like, initial impressions as I work through something, right? So, and so it's always fun to do this with all you guys. And and I'm, I know we got people who are, if there were questions, I don't think we've had any questions in a while, huh, B-Mocker? Kilt, nothing, nothing really kind of coming up. Okay. Right. I'll have to take a look in a second. I'm uh, trying to help somebody on Discord. Oh, okay, well. He's like, I'm trying to do a job too, Roby. Okay, so now all of our cables are hidden, which is what I wanted. This is gonna run down to our thing. Now I just gotta figure this bad boy out, which the best place to run this, I gotta figure that out here. I'm gonna do one zip tie around this group up here. Clean this up a little bit. Yeah, they fell out. I just don't know where they fell out to. I'd really like to get this cable up. Oh, there's a and zip Blondie's trying to tell you something about chat saying you put screws. Yeah, I know, on but the I lost. They, they fell. They fell. Yeah, they fell, guys. So they're not there anymore. Fell to their death. They're gone. I found one, and then I had to replace the other one. There's a magic portal on the floor for M2 screws and anything else of that nature. Yeah. You're me nuts. Hey, somebody in chat said they had a bat come out of their fireplace. What? Wow. I'm I bet that was entertaining. I wish that was kind of scary, actually. Hopefully it wasn't the uh, blood sucking type. Hopefully now we don't know Dracula. Dracula is, just so you guys know, <laughs> Dracula is like a, a new uh, community member here, Roby Tech.
It's all about networking. Dude, he can network for a long time too. Kind of like every time I see a spider, I'm kind of like, should I let it bite me and see what happens, or? I think yes. I think yes, b -Mock. Let's start that experiment today. <laughs> I think I, I sent some ill will here. <laughs> this drives me nuts, guys. I don't like that this this one cable, but I, I, got, I got nothing I can do about it. Okay, so I got an RGB cable. These are gonna go down here. Gotta figure out this RGB cable. Where am I gonna plug this bad boy in? Ugh. We have one down there, we have one up here, but only one. The other one's a four pin, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it's a full four, four pin up there. Which means the closest one is down here, but my cable is so short. Oh, I have an idea. I just realized, I have something I can do. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Oh shoot, come on, come on. Oh, okay, here, I figured it out, guys. This case is not light. It weighs over five pounds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run this, this RGB cable. I'm just lucky because of how I did the Yes, it is. You can move this back side panel and mount more fans. There is a mounting for a separate mounting kit that you can place that whole thing with a for a 360 and have more fans in the back, like a Corsair 5000D or a um, or something like that. Yes, it does have the ability to do that. No, no, no. What I'm going to do is run this up, cut this, okay, I'm going to run this, which is, oh, it's actually run this through here, then I'll, I'll zip tie this down now. And I'm gonna do this, get this connected into the fan. It's like the closest one I have, so it should be the best one. Well, this one looks like it, and it actually has three headers, huh? What do you mean, sorry? For the, for the ARGB, it looks like, but two of them are on the bottom. Yeah, so, and I don't, I can't, this, this cable isn't long enough. So I'm gonna run it up and into the, uh, up where the fan is, sorry, where the AIO is and run it and connect it, daisy chain it to the, because it's got a daisy chain connection on the fan, on the cooler. Ugh. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, some of these that are doing three now instead of just a two. There we go. 
Yeah, I'd really like more uh, options over there, like where those fans are plugged in in the middle of the uh, motherboard. Because getting to those uh, ARGB all the way at the bottom are really only convenient if you've got stuff at the bottom of the case. Exactly, which is what I'm running into now where I can't get to that. So I had to like basically daisy chain it to the, the deep cool. Which is not something I do very often, but I, you know, honestly, kudos to Deep Cool for adding that that ability to do that because that's that would have saved me. I don't know what I would have done. I would have had to like run that. That even the Deep Cool one would have been hard to get down that far. Need you a couple of ARGB extension cables, apparently. Which, which I have, right? I mean, that's another option is you could just run an extension cable with. I mean, I'm tr like I'm trying not to throw like when I when I do these things, I try not to throw a bunch of extra cables in there. You know what I mean? So, and this is an option. Yeah. This is, I mean, this is a solid option too. Not, it's not a whole. It's not very hard to add. Definitely helps for people to recreate at home. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let us cut that little cable there. This is something, guys, when you have these little connections, just be very careful. You do not want to cut any cables. Patience. Don't be in a rush. Then you don't want to have to rebuy your AIO and your thing because you cut an RGB cable or whatever it was. Takes care of that. Flip this over and now cable manage that in. Gotta get my spare ones now. After this, guys, we're gonna add our cable extensions and then Basically, GPU, PSU, and we're done. There we go. There we go. Now, if you really wanted to be smart, one thing you could do, and it, it would work very well, is you could run this cable behind the motherboard um, if you wanted an option in terms of hiding it. I just want to make it a little bit more visible for people who are trying to recreate this at home, but if you wanted to be, you could totally run this behind the MOBO and hide this cable completely so nobody would be able to see it. I want this, whatever this is. Very hard to make that cable not visible. Might have to zip. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have all of our cables plugged in now. RGB's done. Now what we're gonna do is let's add our cable extensions. At least just for the We'll put in our GPU and then we'll do our G cable extensions and go from there. Oops, I just know what I, I don't know what I just knocked off. Oh, I just think I knocked off the front plate for the IO. Yeah, I did. Let 
Wow, that just pops right off. Would help if I put it on the right way. Okay. Let's get our GPU installed and then we'll hide all of our cable stuff with the, uh, I don't even know if we'll need to run the cable thing. I think I, because we have that, that, that it's this, this cool thing, I could just run a standard 16 pin and not use the, the extension. Okay, let's grab our 47 DTI. I think it'll look better. And then it saves cables. So you won't need the easy DIY. You go to a formal event. What? I see you've got your tie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, there we go. Let's drop that out. Nice, BMOC. That was quality. That was quality. Oh, we have some, we have some stuff. What do we got here? We got a dad joke and a hydrate. Oh, that dad joke is old. Can we clear that dad joke? I'll do a hydrate now though. Okay. And then guys almost did the same thing. I put the freaking screws in the wrong place. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I, I did take a drink, uh, Blondie. <sighs> NF Smog, thank you very much for the sub. Uh, American Loves Oil Raw, thank you for the sub. Tier month, tier one. Okay, 4070 Ti Arrow. Now the cool thing about the um, these is that they actually have their own, if you wanted to use their anti-sag bracket, the Gigabyte ones are actually pretty good. I think my favorite one so far is the one that comes with the XFX uh, AMD cards. Oh, but yeah, yeah. I really like the uh, the MSI ones too. Like they come with the Gaming X Trios. That looks really good. That looks really good. Now we just got to go super premium and get white fin stack. I don't know if they have, yeah, I don't know if anybody does white fin stack on a, on a white GPU. Yeah, I haven't seen one either, but it would, it would look gorgeous. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use this right here. trying to figure out how to do this now. Hold on, figuring out the... Okay, take that out. It feels like this should be able to go higher. This would go up above like that. So then you have, you like you block that and then your power cable goes there too.
which I think will be cool, right? That's going to be really neat, because all that's going to be hidden now. Yeah, it's a lot of white. Like it, like it. Yeah, it'll be very white. Okay, cool. So let's, what we're going to do is we're actually going to run like the standard tough 16 pin. So I'm not even going to bother with the white one. And then uh, we'll, because that'll be hidden. So. And then we'll hook, put up the anti-sag. We're going to grab our 16 pin in here. Let me find it. There it is. That CPU. I don't need that one. I will need that. That's SATA. That's what I need right there. Okay. Cables I'll need here in a minute. These get put away. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is even though this is black, don't worry, don't freak out. We're gonna, this will be hidden. So this is gonna route through this and out. Okay, it feels like this actually wants me to do it the other way. supports the BTF Back to the Future motherboards. No, it does not. It does not support Project Zero or BTF. It also doesn't support you removing this uh, power connection. Okay, <laughs> guess I'll do it this way then. off okay that was way easier all right so I do not need to put this in yet I was worried I'd have to put it in because it would I know okay so that's good so you pull this through Ugh. Side view. Okay, now what I can do Learn from my mistakes, guys. There we go. Robitech, we drop it so you don't have to. Exactly. All right, so that takes care of that. So now that's, that's in, and now you can't see that cable, which is cool. And the other part we have
a ravager 1240 there's a schedule posted on the discord so if you join the discord over at gg slash ruby tech you can uh check the schedule that's posted every week on when the streams trying to see if there's a looks like it does allow whoop, whoop, whoop. crud i just dropped it again guys just trying to figure out where the where the uh, line is for the anti-sag don't don't use Discord. You can set up alerts for uh, when Roby goes live on Twitch. Not that this really needs it, but I'm gonna use it because it's here. Okay, so now we got anti-sag and all of the stuff integrated. And that looks really nice. That looks cool. And it just runs down to the bottom, which is pretty neat. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our cable extensions. Which I guess I forgot to grab. That's my bad. I'm gonna grab them real quick. Let's put this up. Guys, we're at 223 of 250. Unlock that other $25 new gift card. Head over to robytech.com slash YouTube and hit that like button. Yeah, we got 438 people just on Twitch, so we should be able to hit that. Yeah, we have, mark over, easy. we have over 600 all up, guys. So go ahead and hit that like and hit that thing. So we don't have to worry about it. America Loves Oil was asking about the 5800X3D and 5700X3D. And honestly, uh, 5700X3D is a better buy at $250 right now. There you go. And yeah, guys, these guys, these guys do deals. speak. These guys do speak for me, right? So like, if you're like, hey, just if BMOC says it, it's like, yes, that is. These guys are people I trust. Who we have a heavy high level of vetting that goes through with them. So if they're saying something, it's, you know, that's why we choose, that's why they're chosen. It's an elite force of tech specialists, tech. Hey, Force Base Cadet, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Okay, last little part, which is the, uh, which is the cable extensions, which, you know, it's super funny. Like, oh yeah, let me see how much, be able to see them. Oh, there's enough there. Okay, cool. I'm a little nervous there for a second, but yeah, these will be fine. Oh, we had the train earlier. Yeah, the train was came by earlier. Panagotis, what is it? It depends on what you're gaming. Like, what are you doing? Like, a lot of times, what you'll see me use mostly, uh, like, when, especially if it's like all AM, it's set, that's a loaded question. There's no real, but you said for gaming, um, yeah, you just said new PC. So it, it really kind of, that's a, that's, there's, there's a lot of nuance to that. 
Yeah, no, no one size fits all because everybody has uh, their strengths and weaknesses. So, but to be honest, they're both so close that choosing either one at this point in time is fine. You can't really make a wrong choice. Yep, it's getting a, getting a lot more preference than, than anything else, which is good. Yeah, it actually is a really nice looking build. I think it came out really good. I like it. And the thing I like about it is whether you did AMD or Intel with the, or in Newegg, or sorry, Newegg, AMD or NVIDIA, this little anti-sag bracket is gonna make it look uniform. So whether you're using the three pin or the, or the, um, sorry, the eight pin, or you're using 16 pin, it's gonna look the same. So if I like, yeah, so I think which would actually be pretty cool. I would just try to avoid using the default adapter from the 40 series because it's too wide for that apparently. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely want to do like an ATX 3.0 power supply. Five more likes, guys, and then we're done. We've unlocked two 25s and a $100 new gift card thus far. It's pretty awesome. Okay, just getting our last cable look, cable comb on. I got a question for you, Justin. What's up? Did you get bit when by a spider yet? When are you going to do yet? another? No, I did not. When are you doing another uh, water cooling build? We are doing one in April. It's all scheduled. And we're actually going to have Stuart from GGF Customs here to do it with me. That's sweet. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at that case. I was like, man, there's so much room for this case to do like a custom loop. And it made me think about... Uh, doing another one of those and there it is you one for a while yeah we have this Corsair one that we need to do as well it's just been time but it's it's uh it's all planned and ready we have all the parts so soon but April for sure I already have that one on the books and Stuart's gonna be here Key thing here is to make sure that this is at 90 degrees. There's a lot of walking around this build to kind of make sure that things are right. What I'm working on here in the back, guys, I'm just getting the, getting, I don't, I ended up adding too many cable combs, so I'm taking a cable comb off. Yeah, it says you need a lazy Susan. 
I, I don't, I don't much, I, I, they don't need them very often, but yeah, I think for this one, it actually would have been useful to have a lazy suit. Oh, Speaking of that, I know um, Skytech uses that a lot. Do you have any uh, collaboration with them uh, in the works? Yes. We're uh, doing a, uh, we're doing, I'll be at PAX doing live builds with them. Oh, sweet. There we go, okay. I'm just making sure that our, the key here is making sure that our stuff is, there we go. Will the event be called Juan and Roby One? <laughs> I don't actually. I don't think any of it'll be live, unfortunately. Well, maybe it will. Who knows? Guess we'll find out. But I'm doing live builds with them uh, at PAX East, though. I do know that. When like, is this said PAX East? Uh, mid end of March, third week of March. It's coming up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to get um, some more of the live streaming like you uh, you did with the Asus stuff. Was it Asus? Yeah, it was Asus, right? Asus? The, or you mean, oh, you mean when I did the live streaming? Oh, you mean at... Yeah. You yeah, mean, you were doing some, some stuff here recently with, at the, oh, yeah, with the Asus, one event yeah. where they were showing off some new stuff. CES, yeah. Yeah, well, you know we have the tech for it. Yeah, I know the the community would definitely love to see see that type of stuff if we can get it worked out for sure. For sure. Agreed. I know when we were at DreamHack, people were begging for it to be live streamed. I know. I'm bummed that it wasn't. Okay. I think. Yeah, that's right angle. That's what I care about. I want it clean, guys. It's all about cleanliness. Okay, so we got that done. Let's go to the side here. Now we need to do our CPU one. It's looking pretty good, guys. I have to say, build looking pretty good. Wouldn't you guys agree? Nice and clean. That looks slick. We got one more zip tie, I mean, one more cable comb, uh, one more cable extension, then we just gotta put our PSU in and then we're done, guys. PSU is gonna be pretty fast. As again, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Guys, we're coming up on, uh, we're gonna be getting pretty close to giving away that uh, 7600X. So if you wanna get in on that, remember subs get extra entries. So if you wanna drop your Prime sub, just to get some of those extra entries, now's a good time to do it. When do you think we'll release AM5 X3, X, they already have. The X3D CPUs are already out. 7800X 3D has been out for a while. 7950X 3D, the 7800X 3D. Well, the new ones are, I, I don't know, you, don't, you, you mean like what, what's post? Well, they have to announce the new stuff first, which probably won't be until end of the year. But I don't think they're gonna rely, I don't think there's gonna be any new X 3D CPUs. I don't know, BMOC, you, you're more in tune with their they're kind of world, what do you think? You think there's gonna be more X3D CPUs for AM5? Uh, yeah, on the 9000 series, it's released, but... Um, we're oh yeah, but I mean, like, I meant for 7000 series. Fusion. No, 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 yeah, we're looking at, uh, I'd say post. We'll probably see an announcement, if I had to guess, see an announcement sometime in July timeframe. Um, and then something by like September probably for CPU. Yeah, that seems to be pretty typical for them. 
it's kind of up in the air right now with, uh, I mean, honestly, AMD is, is doing really well against Intel right now, so there's some speculation they may hold the X3D till 15th series drops, but we just have to wait and see the announcement. It's all speculation right now. Yeah, guys, it's funny or not, the thing that's so crazy is we're going to see some interesting competition very soon is um, because the first kind of look at Intel's Intel's new chips is in the mobile space because um, there's very little known about the desktop replacement, the desktop Meteor Lake CPUs. But we've started our first um, testing with the, uh, we have the first mobile AI Ryzen um, CPUs. And it's interesting, right? Because for the first time, like we're seeing, uh, you know, basically Intel uh, do 80%, 80% of what AMD can do with like 70, like with 70% of the power. So we're talking about like 17,000 Cinebench score with 60, 60, 55, 60 watts with their new with their new architecture. So it's going to be interesting, right? We're like it's going to be. It feels like we're going to have some nice competition there, which is good for everybody. But yeah, well, you'll see because we're we're testing. Uh, we're we're working on that stuff right now. Uh, we have both the um, Ryzen Mobile in a Alienware. I uh, sorry, in an Razer, and then we have the new Meteor Lake Alienwares. And um, the alien, the the difference in performance for power it, for for Intel is actually really impressive. So I don't know. We'll see. I like it because I want like honestly, he's not wrong. AMD's been kicking their butt all over the place, and so we need they need something too, right? Just like what AMD kind of did with the uh, with Nvidia. So I love competition. It's a good thing for customers. Yeah, AMD is really trying to break into that stronghold that Intel and NVIDIA have on the, the mobile market. Which they need, right? Every It's everything. They need everything. I think they've made a lot of headroom, especially with the, uh, the handheld market right now. Uh, oh, dude, yeah. They can keep developing those APUs. They've got really good uh, technology. It's just uh, getting people on board because the mindshare thing is, you know, people still... When they're looking for laptops, they're looking for that Intel and NVIDIA stickers. And that's just something that they've got to really overcome. It's not only does the technology have to be better, it's got to be so much better that, that you pull people away from that 10, 20 year hold that, that Intel's had. And they've been doing the same thing with the rack, with the server space too, which is cool. Right, yeah. And there's been a lot of speculation um, that like even uh, Google would abandon Intel for AMD, but um, they're waiting to see, see what Intel does. But yeah, it's, it's getting super competitive from top to bottom right now in the CPU industry. But then again, Intel just came out and said, hey, we'd love to, with their new fa factory, right? They're like, we'd love to print, we'd love to make C we'd love to make chips for AMD. Because they're trying, they're actually, Intel's new biggest competitor for their second company is, um, is TSMC. So yep. it's all, it's all fun, guys. It's cool. But it'd be interesting to see, like Intel on stage at an AMD, like uh, at an AMD event. You know what I mean? Kind of like when Microsoft was on stage for iPad, when Microsoft Office was like on an iPad. You know what I mean? It's it's amazing, right? In the end, it's all business. And if 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 uh, if the best thing for AMD is to make CPUs with Intel and have Intel foundries make their CPUs, then they'll do it. You know? Yeah, this is a very clean build. Okay, guys, now we're at the very end. We're just gonna work on the PSU. One of my new favorite PSU series. The Tough Golds. And why I love them is because of these cables. Okay, let's get that in. Whoops, I did it too fast. And there we 
we go. Need to take these off first. I got the power. I will say, um, given the cost of this case, I don't know if I did the best. I mean, honestly, this is like, this is like really, a, like I should have done it like a super high end build in here, but um, you do, sometimes people just want good cases. And so this is a case you can definitely grow with. But I mean, you, if you're spending 300 plus dollars on a case, you're probably not putting a, well, I mean, you might, I don't know. I don't know, maybe you are. Maybe I'm just talking out my butt. All that room for drives, this thing uh, screams uh, high-end editing rig. Yeah. As far as the case. Which if you're doing like Adobe, then CPU is gonna be more important. But yeah, I mean like, again, you probably are putting a 360 or 420 in the front. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean a 360 at the top, doing four, like three, 140s in the front. And I honestly, the Pure Loop 2 AIOs are actually really good too. Um, so you really could do a really awesome editing rig on this. Okay, CPU there guys. And these cables, see just how ply they are? Like this is why I like them, they're just, they're like they're they can bend very easily. They're they're just really easy to use. Okay, so now this is gonna go this way. I'm gonna grab our bracket here. There we go. Right here we have our cables, our screws, we're gonna grab four of them. Yeah, the beat, they actually have a white version coming out, but you won't see, like, I don't, the, it's in the back. I mean, if you if you wanted to go white PSU, there is an ASUS ROG Strix version of this that's coming. That's gonna be white, um, which could be cool. It has the same cables. standard. There we go. I don't know if Bluetooth, I mean, I know that at some point in time we're going to have some sort of wireless or like interesting power transfer thing. You know what I mean? Like charging plates are an, a, kind of an example of what that would be. I know some of the biggest issues with power is just chances of being grounded through humans and what the, the pass through rate and stuff like that is and some other stuff. But I mean, I know there are people thinking about it and it's gonna blow our minds and we finally like don't have to, like when we can transfer power in really interesting ways. Okay, I'm gonna grab this cable right here. Here's our PSU power. Okay, so now all of our power is plugged in. Not quite at a straight point.
Okay, plugged in. Okay, let's see how strong this magnet is. That's just a shadow. On the thing, it actually looked like there was a mark on there, but it's not, okay, good. I was like, wait, what happened? Okay, so we're gonna be careful when setting this down now. Okay, pretty strong magnets, good. Okay, here we go guys. Last little bit. First thing we got is we're just gonna How did I even do that? That doesn't even make any sense. I don't even know how that happened, but okay. Okay, so let's work on this first. Two SATA connections. SATA one for wireless charger. Apparently there's a wireless charger on the top, guys. I did not know that. I don't know if you knew that, but there you go. Wireless charger on the top of this PC. Oh shoot, really? There we go. Okay, next up, kind of the longer routing cable here, right here. So Panagotis, a lot of cases actually have like hubs, fan hubs that are built into them. Like this one actually has fan, like enough, this has two, three uh, connection fan hubs built into it. So six fans would be connected into that. And then those would connect to the motherboard or you can buy separate fan hubs as well. So sometimes when you look at your new PC, looking at the case and seeing if it comes with a fan hub is how you would connect them all. There we go, all done. Pretty simple, guys. And there it is. Okay, let's get our back on.
Okay, so now, get this on. Fan hub. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is this. There we go. Let me give it the airflow one. For the beat, there we go, airflow. If the NZXT meme case had that option, it wouldn't be the meme case. Okay, guys, there it is. The build is done. Looking pretty good. We got airflow set for it. one cable that drives me nuts and I don't know how to fix it. But yeah, looks nice and clean. The one thing that's interesting is that they actually, because of the black, they put the black in the back. So I think you do get some black. It would have been interesting to have like white padding or, or instead of the black for the, for the, um, for the noise canceling stuff, but yeah. But it does look, it does look very clean, right? Like from a, just a build standpoint, it is incredibly clean. Wow, okay. Well, let's do our, let's do our, uh, let's do our uh, counter cable uh, zip ties real quick. Put this away. And if you wanted to, you can actually replace this here. So I think, oh, maybe not. I don't, oh, I thought maybe that goes right there, but no. I thought maybe that would replace these, but I'm not really sure what that's for. Huh. I like how you guys are like unrealistically clean. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. So clean it defies expectations, huh? Okay. Let's count our zip ties real quick, guys. Get all our tools out of the way. Get tools out of the way. There we go. Okay. Odd or even, here's the question. So we have one, two, three, four, five. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, there's 10. One, two, three, four, five, there's 15. One, two, three, four, five, 20. Exactly 20, that is an even zip tie count, guys. Even zip tie count, 20, there you go.
All right, let's take a drink real quick. Finally hit a two-year mark after forgetting to sub from the beginning of the stream three years back from Kisaidu. Thank you very much, man. Neomad, thank you for the 11 months. And in need of temperance, 22 months. Hey to you too, buddy. Okay. Well, there is the build. Um, will it post? That's the question. So let's go ahead and get that, that going in there. Prediction, will it post? Um, because this is a very sponsored stream, not a typical one. There won't be any deals or anything today, so we're going to wait for that prediction to happen. Sorry, Tom, if I told you that I was. Um, but this is an all, I buy all one some there, so. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, okay, here we go. But I did want to go through parts one more time so people know what's going on. Um, so this one we are doing... Uh, uh, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 7 x 3D for the motherboard, the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Pro X, which is that beautiful all-white PCB. For the graphics card, the Gigabyte Aero NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti. If you wanted to think about the Super, you can add like an additional 5% to the overall performance that you guys are going to see today. Patriot Viper VP4300 Lite, two terabyte NVMe drive. The DDR5 6000 mega transfer, 48 gigs of Patriot Viper RAM. For the case, the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901 in white. For the cooler, the Deep Cool AK620 Digital. And then for the uh, PSU, we're actually using the Asus Tough 750 watt PSU. I'm gonna see if we happen to get a new parts list. Uh, nope. Okay, so no, uh, no, no uh, update part. So anyway, guys, that is what we have in here, and we're still waiting for the prediction to kind of finish here. But that is what we have inside of this. So a couple things, uh, giveaways that are still happening, guys. We have two twenty-five dollar new A gift cards that we're giving away uh, for uh, getting uh, the two hundred fifty likes and for hitting a level five hype train. A hundred dollar new A gift card that we unlock via the. Uh, via you guys being awesome and uh, getting over 100 subs there. Uh, we also have the Ryzen 5 7600X we're going to be giving away here. Uh, again, if you want to get in on that, make sure that you are a member of the Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. Uh, you are following on Twitter, on Twitch, you're subscribed on YouTube, and that if you have an X account or Twitter account that you're following on Twitter as well, you do not need to be subscribed to enter to win. Uh, if you want to get extra entries, you can use your Amazon Prime sub. That'll get you extra entries to win. And let's just get things kind of rolling right now. Let's give away the two $25 New Age gift cards, though, just for fun. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Exclamation point community. Exclamation point community. Uh, starting that 20, uh, $225 new gift card starting right now. Exclamation point community. Getting it ready for plug in. Two minutes. Make sure you get your vote in. One minute left still, guys. Two cats, two furious. Norex, thank you very much for the sub as well.
Oh, we have picked a winner. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know that. Congratulations to Ayata Zex and Sh Shifty Effect. Shifty Effect and AI Ayata Effects. You guys are the winners. And we are about to hit another hype train, guys. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Okay, so there we go, guys. Congratulations, you guys are the winners. Uh, let's see if this posts. Here we go. Three, two, one. Ooh, it's orange. I see the deep cool. It's not gonna have a lot of RGB. You're gonna see some RGB on the, uh, okay, there goes the Oris. And there's the stuff on the uh, GPU. There we go. Now it's all synced with the motherboard. Still waiting for that the motherboard to post. Did plug it in, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. There, it's still going through postcodes. I like that you're getting a little bit of the RGB off of here too. Still waiting. Oh, 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 we are posted, guys. We are posted. There it is right there, posted. Oh, it went away and then it came back. I did see it. We'll wait, we'll wait. I'll leave it there. I saw the post. There it is, guys. There it is right there. Okay, so we are officially posted. It's alive. Let's get it ready now. Very clean looking. Okay, let's go to side camera here so you guys can see. I'm gonna grab our keyboard and mouse. There we go. You know, this whole time I've been sitting here making jokes and trying to say stuff. You're muted? No, my mic was disabled. What? Really? Yeah, uh, so because of all the updates I did in the restart, it didn't like re enable my mic, so I had to completely un. Uh, I was like, I was like, you guys got really quiet, but I, you know, sometimes I know that you guys give your own life sometimes. Okay, there we go. So we are now all duplicated. That's funny. I literally, like when you went to go plug it, uh, plug the, the build in, I was like, plug it in, plug it in. You were making all sorts of jokes and it was nothing. You Nobody heard you. And what's funny is I made a joke. Uh, it was back to the Lazy Susan part. And um, I said, hey, chat says you need a Lazy Susan. And not two seconds later, Bmox says the same thing. That's funny. <laughs> Okay, so here we go, guys. What we're gonna do real quick, let's get our, we're gonna get our deep cool set up. So that way you can see the temps there.
I'm actually pretty excited how the deep cool is gonna show that. Okay, I gotta restart. Cause it definitely is plugged in. Almost 700 people here, guys. I have to say, man, the build looks really good. We'll probably use Aorus. We'll get the Gigabyte going here in a minute just to sync all the colors. Well, Windows 10 isn't supported anymore. So that means it doesn't get quality security updates. So I like the whole concern is like whether you care. And honestly, we've, we've done enough things to know that Windows 11 performance is on par with Windows 10. But honestly, like for the security updates alone, I would not be running Windows 10. Okay, there we go, guys. Look at that. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. Loving, I like just having that screen now. So you're seeing like as temps or whatever it was, but now we actually have a cool screen on there, which makes it a little bit better, which I love. So let's go and go from this. Windows 10 is, it's been a while. Oh, okay, there you go. So it's getting close, sorry. So there we go, guys, all set up. I thought they had ended it before then. So, whoa, what is the, is there just a reflection at the top? What is that? It, it's like weird on this camera. Oh, it's reflecting something. You, oh, you guys oh, are yeah, seeing the reflection about, of the camera. About the RGB bar. Yeah, you, it's actually the cable bar. It's the camera. It's reflecting the camera. Just it's just like at the perfect angle for the screen. Oh, that is so cool. So it just looked like it was like right at the RGB bar, <laughs> which is not. <laughs> okay, guys, let's. Uh, I, I think maybe let's take a look at colors. Uh, let's go to here, RGB Fusion. So we'll go to static. Ooh, I like the red's kind of cool. Let's do the, I like the orange though. I'm surprised that it's not doing RAM. So I might have to do. Why is it, what? Let's make all this orange there. There we go. I like the orange, right? So it's like very be quiet there. Um, let's, I have to install the Patriot. I guess the Patriot is not controlled by RGB Fusion. So what is the RGB software? I forgot what it's called. Mm. 
memory. Uh, so I went. Oh, so then this goes to here, but I want the. So it's so uh, everything but oh no, it's just RGB fusion. So why do I not see it? Maybe I have to hold on. Let me look. right now. It should work. Yeah, you should see like a little RAM thing like under that motherboard symbol yeah, yeah, on the left, right? Yeah, that's usually what happens, but for some reason, I don't see it there. I'm seeing Giga, that's a VGA tool. I don't think that's it. The graphics driver, I don't think that's it. I mean, I'll install this. Okay, I'll try it one more time, see if that does anything. Yeah, because you're not seeing the, the graphics card in there either, right? There it is. Now I see it. I still don't it's see still the no RAM. RAM. And it actually did change the color of the arrow, which is actually pretty crazy, but why not? Why do I not see the RAM? That's really interesting. And I know Patriot, I, I think there is a Patriot RGB software. I thought I saw it. I don't want to use open RGB. No. Oh. I'm, su I'm surprised I'm not seeing anything in there. Yeah, I found an old link that's dead now. Yeah. Which is weird because usually it should just show up here under RGB Fusion. Yeah, it almost looks like they killed killed their own to because yeah, they, they support one, yeah. all the motherboard ones. Which is ideal, right? Like that's what you want to do. Until it don't work. Yeah, then you're like, wait, what's going on? Well, we'll go to side here. I mean, again, outside of the RAM, which is the only thing that's not doing its part right now, we just went to like a nice clean orange. Even the Oris Mobo is sitting in a nice orange right now. So it's just got that nice orange look to it, which looks cool. And then Viper's just doing it. The RAM's just doing its own thing right now. Huh. I don't know what to, that's weird about the RAM. And the crazy oh. thing is it's always the RAM. The RAM's like the hardest thing to get linked up with RGB. Yeah. If only then, we could normalize that in 2024. <laughs> that's 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 what I hope the president's campaign on. Look, and there we go. You also have a little bit of the RGB bar here at the front as well. Yeah. Oh, it's lit up. Oh. It's just not the right color. Araxnus, Triton Z. He said, try the Triton Z one and see if that works. All right, I'll try it. I don't, I, I, he said he's worked with other brands. We'll try it. Why not? We'll try it. Oops. I mean, we're talking about DDR6 and we can't get the daggum RAM RGB to work. Come on. <laughs> we will try this one. To 412. Wow, this is pretty old actually. I will try it. I don't have a lot of hope, but I will try it. Those do tend to have a conflict though.
We'll try it. Okay, restart my computer. I did find that some of it could be a bio setting in the advanced under memory. It's something like SPD control and you want it to be false or enabled. You said you said that there's a bio setting that could be doing it? Yeah, um, it's, I know in Asus BIOS it's called SVD write is the option and you want it to be enabled or false. Okay, we can take a look here after this. See if Z G Skill does it. Unfortunately, RGB Fusion is kind of the bane of Gigabyte's ecosystem. Yeah. It's one of the things, it's like, it's, it, it, it definitely needs some love. Okay, deep cool loaded. See if every, see what else is going on. Maybe G-School is orange. Let's just, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll like detect it all of a sudden. Sometimes that happens too. Nope. Okay, well, we'll try this. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'll try. Oh, there it is. Believe it or not, it worked. Static, let's make it orange. I've made them all different colors. Um, oh, there you go. There's a little thing right there, it says sync to LED one, Ruby. Oh. There you go. That did not change the RGB, though. Unfortunate. Yeah, it didn't. I mean, like, I was able to sync, and it looks like it's there, but it's doesn't. It didn't work. It didn't actually affect the RGB of the RAM. It looks like it. It's just it, if I had G Skill RAM in there, it would be like, oh, cool. But no, it didn't have any effect on the RAM itself, guys. RAM still doing its crazy Viper thing. <clears throat> Now we just gotta throw the whole build away. Yep, let's just throw it away, guys. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna reboot. We're gonna, sorry, we're gonna remove that because that didn't do anything, so I'm not gonna leave it in here. And then we're gonna just do one other thing and then if that doesn't work, we'll go from there. Okay, uh, we're gonna go into the BIOS and just see if there's something there. And then I will text, I will text, I'm gonna email Shannon from Patreon and be like, hey, I, your RGB, your freaking stuff doesn't work with RGB Fusion, why? So let's see if we can see anything in the BIOS. Plus you get to see the BIOS. I haven't turned on, I haven't turned on, uh, I haven't turned on, uh, uh, DOCP yet, so, or sorry, Expo. So that'll be good. Read the manual. I thought I was reading the manual. It says read the manual. If you've checked their manual, especially with the BIOS, it's not helpful. But what if we read the Manuel? Where's Doc Manuel? Where's Manuel? I mean, I have no idea where something like that would be. I've never used a Gigabyte BIOS. Oh, advanced memory settings? Yeah, I was gonna, that's where I was gonna go now.
That's sub timings. Yeah, it's no. One of those SPDs. Yeah, that's just the info. And it's not anything here. This is all sub timings. I don't see. I I you, I thought it would maybe be in miscellaneous, but blind. So he's like, I'm blind. Maybe it's just is it something here. So there's all your expo. So there's your expo one. Okay. We have Expo 1 and Expo 2. We want Expo 1. Hey, Pat. AXMP, low latency support, everything there is fine. I don't see anything else. I remember that. I, I know which setting you're talking about. I remember it on... Um... Yeah, and it was on Asus. Yeah, and, it's, and it was mostly, it usually fixed, um, it didn't work on all RAM. It was mostly for uh, Dominator. On auto, PBOs on auto. Yeah. I don't know, guys. Oh, I found the software. Where is it? Oh, you oh, found it? In Discord. So there actually is software? Yeah, I had to dig. Apex Gus, it's not that it. bad. Honestly, the thing is, is that's why we do this is so we can figure it out when we test with other things. Um, so I, you're actually everything that we're doing is pretty straightforward. And most of the memory, like if you like, one of the things we're finding out is most of the time it's like with RAM, we'll have a tendency to use um, use the actual RAM RGB. I will say that this is one of the strengths and weaknesses when you talk about certain motherboard manufacturers. So a signal RGB would see it, yeah. Okay, I'll go to Viper's website and go to, to RAM. But at least we have, we have, uh, we need to turn on Expo anyway, which it did boot, which was fine. And that was actually really fast. So we have 6,000 mega transfer now. Let's put our, let's back in, okay. I know he, like, Kevin had seen it. Patriot RG. Yeah, it's on that page you were at earlier. You just gotta scroll all the way down to the very bottom. Yeah, yeah, okay. You go down to the bottom, you'll see some PDF files and then there's a, a software link. Yeah. Be that there, page. Viper RGB software. Hey, see, you just gotta go get it. That's exactly what you want to do. See, it just was hard to find on their on their website. 
I knew there was Viper RGB software. Yeah, next time you talk to him, let him know they should probably put that link like up there at the top. Yeah. I will talk to him. I will ping Shannon. Or knowing Shannon, he's probably already pinged me and be like, I just felt a disturbance in the force. Now, fingers crossed it doesn't cause RG, RGB fusion to crash. Okay, lighting effect. Let's go to static. And then orange. I like that high-res ramp picture there. Dude, that is crazy high-res. It's not the right them all. I want... Oh, okay, that reset. Okay. Um, 255... What? What? I don't. Oh man. Wow, this is. <laughs> Static. I want it. Like, is there? Like, oh, there we go. I was like, wait a minute. Can you hit that little uh, squiggly thing and make this, them all do it? That right there, that reverts. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that's what I said. I mean, it's cool that you get like this per... Yeah, they definitely need to apply all. Okay, let's see, did it actually all go orange? No, it didn't see, oh, I have to hit apply. Yay! Guys, we did it! It's orange! Yay! Yay! Mission Mission accomplished! Did RGB Fusion go yellow though? Yeah, that's just the, I'll, I'll change that. I think it's like, I'm gonna try and match the, I'm gonna try and match it to that deeper orange now. You can actually make it brighter too. Yeah, I like that that ram orange. Yeah, the ram actually looks really good orange. Okay, so let's all that set. Okay, let's go to here. Let's go to watch it shows up in here now. It didn't. Okay. So they so let's see if we can get a darker orange. Let's do to I'm trying to get like more of a darker orange. I think it's like the Oris, which is like kind of where it's like, it's just the, the RGB for the Oris is kind of not the best. It doesn't seem like it's doing the, let me, let me turn this off. Oh yeah, see this is supposed to be Maybe I can see if we can change that to a little bit more. That's red, okay. So let's do. Okay, that's more the color right there, 48. There you go. That looks more that looks more aligned now. Let's just make I think I think leaving that white looks better. Okay, there we go. That looks like more matchy now. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so we got that. That was all the RGB. Now let's actually see how this thing runs. It's right now it's sitting at 40 degrees. Let's go and uh so let's go ahead and run some Cinebench on it. One thing I'm gonna do real quick, fan control. Oh, that's just for this. Oh.
Oh, that's probably what I need for this. Okay, hold on. Let's see if this, I'm trying to find the fan speed. Now I do have independent control, so I could actually make them, they actually has a, on the front panel, you can, uh, you can actually change the fans to run at full speed on their own. That didn't seem to do anything. So funny because fan control is only for the GPU. You think you'd be able to control your fans there, but I guess you have to do it in your. Oh, this is not what that's for freaking. No, add remove that. That is not what I needed. Okay. Well, let's just, for the sake of being fast, which we're not being right now. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just run the fans up, which I have control of anyway. Okay, so fans are now running at max, which I have manual control of which are still actually pretty quiet. And then let's see how this does in multi-core. In single core, 10 minute duration, starting right now. Oh, wow. Well, that's way better than I thought it was going to do. Why does it seem so slow? Oh, I ran single core. I'm only pulling 40 to 44 watts. Yeah, it's also not running multi-core. Well, that'll do it. There we go. I was like, wait, that seems really low. There we go, 80 watts. Okay, that was better. I was like, wait, that's... But there we go, yeah, that's totally fine. Okay, there we go. Air cooling, no problem. It looks good, and then, I mean, it's funny because you can actually just see it on the cooler, the uh, AIO screen. It's just showing on the AIO screen. I'm uh, sorry, on the, uh, like you don't even need to look at the, uh, you don't even need to look at the, the screen. Look at that, you can just look on the side there and that's how hot it's running right now. Oh, let's, uh, let's, let's test, let's see airflow. That's always fun when we're running Cinebench. Here we go. You guys hey, love fun. this. Do you want to change out the front blade? I already did. It's already it's already on the airflow one. I know, just so you can show the other one is fine oh, too. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, I can do that too. But here we go, guys. So you can see how the air is being pulled through. Actually, it's really hard to, oh, there, see how fast it's moving? Dude, that's moving so fast. Yeah, it's hard to see it because it's just blowing right out through one it's inside like, and out the it's other. It's going so fast. That's just like getting, yeah, it's just like being sucked in. Yeah, that, and it's, and it's, it's funny because it's not even that loud. Yeah, I feel like when you got an air cooler like that, it's just so, so streamlined because the front fans are pushing it right to the CPU yeah, cooler and then right it, out the back. Yeah, it's just going so quick. Yeah, I know. Warm air rises though. Okay, so let's uh, let's do a test, which I thought was actually a pretty good idea. Thank you very much for thinking about that. Uh, let's uh, we're gonna let it run, so it's gonna continue to run. We got ten minutes here. Let's uh, let's switch out the panel to see what the temps are different. When we, if we use the solid panel versus the front panel. Right now it's at 84, 85. We 
We still have seven minutes left. Okay, here we go. So you guys can see the numbers. Now we're gonna go to the solid panel. So this is how it comes stock. Got a couple of subs and Jay Panda with 42 months. Wow. In in Veeam with uh, with uh, two months prowess, we have Prowlers 83. Thank you very much as well. Guys, look at that. 83. It's like it's almost making no difference. Yeah, those side events are big enough that it doesn't really make a difference which one you use. It's almost the same, yeah. So either one, either one would be fine. Oh, GS, I love that name, GS Tickle Stick. <laughs> well, there we go. That was a good. That was a good call. Um, that was a good call to check. Oh, look, yeah, it's still sitting eighty one, eighty three. I mean, the eighty one is as it's dropping down and jumping in there. There's some pretty wide air vents on the the edge. Oh, of the dude, front, they're though. so big. That's like it's they're an inch and a half because it's curved a little bit. So this is like an inch and a half right here in terms of how much room inside there are. So yeah, but this is where it was when it was on the front panel too. So, I mean like, yeah. So, I mean, and it's actually quite a bit quieter in the front. I do like this front panel a little bit better though. If you look at the, I don't know my, your impression, but I actually kind of like it more with the solid front panel versus the airflow front panel. I think it has a cleaner look. I personally think so, but. And room for you to put a Robitech logo on there. Yeah, exactly. You can put a logo or whatever you want on it. Oh, by the way, did you guys see our latest thing? The Roby Cat pillows. We have them in all different sizes. Oh my God. <laughs> the first I saw this. Dude, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You think that we have it back here, but no, 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 hold on. This is what you need. <laughs> That's a stuff of nightmares. <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> well, That's what... um... and so many people have said that it's like it's like everybody said this is the stuff that's nightmare fuel. <laughs> it's nightmare fuel. <laughs> Matt, imagine the chick that comes over and sees that on some guy's bed. My son actually wants one. That's what somebody said. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, guys. But yeah, we have the Roby Cat pillows now. Jamie and I had an idea for DreamHack, and I think it's now changed. <laughs> Okay, guys, well, we've shown you thermals. So, I mean, again, great, like, and again, thank Kevin. Wow, somebody said, I would let my dog hump it. I'm like, okay, well, let's not send it to you. <laughs> I think the only qu real important question is, does the cat pillow scare cats away from the PC to keep their hair out maybe of yeah it's 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 maybe it's like the scarecrow for your pc 
I do. I like the solid front panel actually a bit better. And I mean, temps, if temps are good, we're good. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a quick look real quick. Stopping that. Let's go and jump in here. And uh, let's give it a look. Hey, guys, wow, we have a, we have a hype train going. So if we, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, it's a scarecrow for your PC. So let's go ahead and just check real quick some quick gaming stuff. Well, uh, it's almost eight o'clock, so we'll we'll be quick here. Oh man, how much? How big is this update? Riddick over here dropping them like they're hot. What? What did Riddick do? Ten more gifted subs, Riddick. What are you doing? He's going in there. We got Riddick dropping it like it's hot. We got Koala dropping a hundred bits. Uh, we actually already have the numbers for that for frames for 4070 Ti. B mock drop, wow, B mock drop in like it's hot. Everybody drop, you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I'm trying to see how big this update is. Araxis, hopefully soon. We've, sorry, it's just the company that we went to is trying to get the thicker map material. We'll get them up soon. They're, right now, it's still currently scheduled for March. Eight gigabytes. Oh my gosh, that's huge. It's gonna be done in two minutes, that's huge. <clears throat> Uh, Apex Gus, we're working on one, and we're actually about to do a a ultra wide. We're gonna do an ultra wide. We're gonna be doing an ultra wide monitor guide, and then we're doing some stuff for sim rigging and stuff like that. So it's coming up. Yeah, Roby Cat is coming, guys. Done in 53 seconds. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, they're all 1440, so basically 2K, multiple 2K monitors, but they're all gonna be widescreen, see mixed. Okay, 30 seconds left on the download. And then it just has to update. Yeah, 4070 Ti. Oh, yes, this will be 1440p for sure. Yeah, my bad. Oh, I can turn the fans. I can turn the fans down. I like this little fan thing. Wow, when it's when the fans are gone, it's like super quiet. Oh, so let me show you. I, I should show you while we're waiting for this. Check this out. This is something else that also comes with the case. Right here. So this is, you have a touch pad. What you can do, it, which makes it actually really cool, is like if you wanna sync the RGB, right? You can just push the sync button and then that, or you can brighten and lower the RGB, and this is for the bar specifically. But with the fans, it just lights up, you touch it, and it makes them spin faster or you can spin it to make it spin slower. And you have a sync button, which will make it sync with the motherboard. So it'll control from the motherboard. And then you also have backlighting on your, uh, actually on your uh, ports as well. So if you can't see, you can just touch it. And then this will these will light up so you can see them as well, which is actually pretty cool. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a really, honestly, the more that we play with this case, the more I'm, I'm actually just impressed with uh, the amount of engineering and thought that's kind of gone into it. Whoops, yeah, I just kicked my... Everything's okay, it's all fine. <sighs> Oops, I hit the wrong button. Okay, so we're done. So let's pop in some Cyberpunk real quick. Yes, it's a, it should be a, a Noble 7, yes, that should be correct. 
And it has a QI, that's right. That's the other thing too, I forgot about that. Check it out. You can see it right here. So go to top down and then Look at that. So you can charge your phone. Zig PC dropping five gifted subs. So yeah, you can charge your phone on the top of it as well, which is actually super cool. Wow, yeah, you guys are at level, almost at level, you almost finished level five. Remember, now we've already unlocked that giveaway, guys. So the next thing would be the hundred dollars if we get to level ten. Okay, so let's go to continue with that account. Play. Hey, there it goes, guys. Good job. Thank you very much for all the gifted subs and everything, guys. You guys are rock stars. Okay, so we'll just run a little, we'll run a little cyberpunk. Don't worry, we are gonna be doing a mini review of this. So by the way, pay attention to the channel, probably in the next couple weeks, we'll have Apex numbers, uh, Forza numbers, all those will be out. So you'll be able to see how this performs for 2,500 bucks. Um, the case obviously, sorry, 2,400 bucks if you did it with the uh, lower end motherboard. The only two is understand the case is $300 of this. So if you want to put this in a less expensive case, you could get this close to $2,000, which is a, you know, which is a good price uh, for a build like this. But I, I can't, I can't argue that this case is actually really cool. Um, and you know, there's a lot, this is definitely a case you could grow into um, as well, right? But honestly, this looks super clean when you just look at it like this with all of that stuff. I mean, this, I'm really excited to get photos and stuff of this build. Um, it just, it just came out super clean. So, uh, great job. Be quiet. Uh, very excited to have gotten to show this on the, on the channel. Uh, hard drives, there's tons. I mean, this thing can do a bunch of drives, uh, but we, right now we have, uh, this can support, the motherboard can support four NVMe drives. Um, and then uh, you, you have room for two SSDs, at least two physical drives, and then you have drive bays on the side if you wanted to add those too. But let's go ahead and just check here real quick. Go to graphics, set it to ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on auto, no frame generation on. We're just gonna set it Windows borderless. Uh, V-Sync is off. Let's just see how this bad boy does. And then again, if you think about this, if you were curious, well, you know, the 4070 Ti is obviously EOL. So again, you could go to the 4070 Ti Super, which is the same price, but uh, just add about three to 4% in terms of frames. So this will still give you a good, a, a good idea. So there we go, 96, 97, 88 frames per second right there, 89. I forgot to open MSI Afterburner, so I'll open that here in a minute. And this is not frame generation. This is just a 4070 Ti uh, just with DLSS. This is 1440p, yes. So again, this, this PC is very, very capable of gaming. The motherboard that's inside of this case is the, uh, this is the uh, Aorus, uh, the Aorus Pro X67, the Aorus Pro X X670E. So you go 104 frames per second. Jump out of that. Probably you have AMD on your mind. Huh? 
You said X670E. Yeah, X670E. Yes, X670E. Yes. Again, we'll just go through parts list again real quick while we wait for this to shut down. Uh, parts list for this, X790. again, is right there. The AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Pro X, the Aorus, the Gigabyte Aero NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti, you can get the super version, it's the same thing, within three to four percent. Patriot Viper VP4300 two terabyte NVMe drive. We have Viper Elite DDR5 at 48 gigabytes at 6,000 mega transfer RAM. The Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901 in white, which is the case that we're showcasing. A huge shout out to Be Quiet for that. And then the Deep Cool AK620 digital. And then the PSU is the Asus Tough 750 watt gold PSU. So that's, the, that's what we have uh, inside of this build that we've built today. So, all right, let's do our next giveaway which in this case, okay, so we did not get it. So it's a $100 new a gift card. I'm gonna stop the things for that because we, I, like I can't do it all the way to the end. So we're just gonna do this. So they're gone. Okay, so $100 new a gift card up for grabs, guys. Exclamation point, new egg now. And then we'll do the 7600 here in a minute. Starting that right now, exclamation point, new egg now, guys. $100 new A gift card up for grabs, guys. Yeah, I found it weird that they did the, the B650 version they called the ICE and then the X670 is just called the Pro X. Yeah, I don't know why they did that either. You'd think they'd keep that same naming convention for both of them make, with that it would white make PCB. It, it would make it easier, right? They did that on the Intel side too, though. They have one that's just the Pro and one that's the Pro ICE. Okay, guys, giveaway still going on. Fifty seconds left. Now, we are getting to the very end. We are getting to the very end of this this um, this stream, and the last thing we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be doing the uh, seventy six hundred X giveaway. Again, you do need to be a member of the Discord server. You do need to be, uh, you do need to, uh, so discord.gg slash Robitech. You also need to make sure that you are uh, following on Twitch, you're subscribed on YouTube, and that you are a uh, following on X if you have an account, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna draw, oh yeah. So make sure that you're doing those things you're signed up for. And if you wanna get extra entries to that 7600X, uh, you can drop your Prime sub, that'll give you extra entries. And remember, it also enters you to win this. We have one more month left now on this uh, uh, sub-only giveaway, uh, the MSI Project Zero build. So this is up for grabs for one lucky sub here. Um, and then uh, if you subscribe it to your one, you get three entries. Subscribe it to your two, you get five. Subscribe it to your three, you get 10. And every extra sub gets you one additional entry. So you can get in on this as well, guys. Real State, wow, that's a name, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, get those in because remember you're entered then. And then we also have three PCs that we're giving away in March, which you will get extra entries towards that as well. So it's a good time to subscribe and be all squared away for that too. Okay, uh, congratulations. We're going to look at our winner now. Congratulations to Blazon12 1216. Blazon1216. You are the winner of the uh, $100 new A gift card. Congratulations, my man.
Congratulations, so make sure that you get those in and we're gonna, we're gonna be doing that giveaway here pretty soon. One thing I just wanna make sure that we showed, guys, is I wanna make sure that we showed the gaming temps. Okay, well, apparently COD is failing, so I'm just gonna show it again on Cyberpunk. Sorry, guys. So we can show you some gaming temps. I hate it when, it, when, a, I hate it when a good test all falls apart, but COD was being funky. Why is our, there it is, okay. Oh no, when you don't quite do the cut and paste. Okay, so gaming temps are up there at the top. Uh, so the rest of it, I guess I forgot to post a TI, but that way you can see it. So this one we'll go ahead and throw on frame generation just to make it a little bit higher. Let's go ahead and go all the way to Overdrive with auto, we'll go to balanced and frame generation and ray reconstruction. So this is Uber, Uber Cyberpunk 2077, where so you guys can see all the information and stuff like that too. So seeing what gaming temps are. So there you go, you're seeing gaming temps at 50s, 55 right there. Your CPU temp is in the also in the 60s, looks like, which is fine. So again, we're using that, look at that 4070 Ti, 96%, 99%, it's being peaked. We're still running with frame generation over 100 frames per second with overdrive. So this is path tracing and ray reconstruction. Icy Sniper, thank you very much for doing that. Okay guys, we're gonna be doing this giveaway in just a... Yeah, path tracing is crazy. And there you go, right there. Average was 95.37 frames per second. And as you can see, that was like great for gaming temps because it kind of tested everything. So I'll give you an idea in terms of gaming temps. Now, sorry I wasn't able to show you COD or all that stuff. Don't worry, we will do that with the mini review. So just look for the full build review on this uh, when it comes out. Uh, later on in uh, later on in the next couple weeks when we run this through its full mini review Okay, let's do the giveaway for the 7600 X guys everybody ready Everybody ready Getting excited thank you very much congratulations for the congratulations on the uh, the awesome work and everything else, you guys, uh, just for uh, doing the challenge and getting all those points. Here we go. Exclamation point, Roby Cat. Exclamation point, Roby Cat. Get it going. Two, three minutes, guys. Exclamation point, Roby Cat. Know that it is fueling your, it's fueling your nightmares right now. Just wait till DreamHack. Yeah, exactly. Just have it. It's, real, it's it's fueling your nightmares right now. And please, guys, do not spam. You only need to enter once, maybe twice at the most. Spamming can get you timed out. We've actually had somebody who got timed out and then wasn't able to claim their prize. Three minutes, guys.
Keep it going, guys. Remember, you can get extra entries if you use your Amazon Prime sub. 44 seconds left, guys. It's okay, sh uh, Shifty, if you re-enter, if you put it in one more time, you'll get your extra entries. Eighteen seconds, guys. I don't know if you're uh, interested, but uh, there's somebody available to raid if you want afterwards. Is it Braythorn? He he went away. Is is that who it is? Yeah, that's Braythorn. Okay, yeah, we can do that. There we go, guys. Roby Cat. We're going to draw our winner now. See who our winner is. Congratulations to T3 Division. T3 Division, you are the winner of the 7600X. You guys, congratulations. Now, stand by for a potential redraw, guys. We just got to verify that that is indeed the winner. So just stand by real quick. We're going to verify, make sure it's good, all that sort of stuff. So hold on, stand by, and then we'll go from there. Build came out great. There was some, it was like some cable management stuff, but for the most part, that was like working within it just to make the back look clean. But yeah, really happy with how this build came out. It's very well done. I should be charging my phone while I wait. That charging thing is actually really cool. Yeah, I had to get a wireless charger for my desk because I was tired of it in the plane. Andy wanted uh, T3 Division to whisper her on Twitch. Okay, guys, still waiting. They were on Twitch. Hold on, stand by, guys. Just waiting for confirmation. <laughs> Toss on a Roby Cat if you win. I mean, I wouldn't be against that. Oh, is it 30 seconds, Blondie, till the person hasn't responded yet? Wow. Don't give away that 7600X, man. Come get it. Yeah, dude. I can't believe this is about to happen, dude. Who enters and then doesn't win? What? It's going to happen in a reroll in just a second. Hey, guys, if you won, you need to whisper Blondie But Geeky on Twitch. You need to whisper Blondie But Geeky on Twitch. T3 Division, uh, you have 30 seconds. 15 seconds. Maybe emergency. T3 Division won. No whisper, no prize.
Wow, I've never, this is to be the first time. Reroll, it's rerolling. Okay, we're gonna pick another winner. Sorry, T3 Division. We're gonna pick another winner right now. And Congratulations to... Flame and Sarge. <laughs> Flame and Sarge, you are the winner. Congratulations, Flame and Sarge. Please whisper Blondie. Please whisper Blondie on... Uh, please whisper Blondie on uh, Twitch. He's like, hey -o. Oh, and I'll, I'll do the dad joke while we wait. The dad joke, because Nisnu did it. Does anybody know what Forrest Gump's password is? Does anybody know what Forrest Gump's password is? It's one Forrest one. <laughs> One forest, one. <laughs> there you go, dad joke time, guys. There you go. Blondie, make sure that we clear that. The smoke said Shannon from Patriots in the house. Oh, Shannon from Patriots in the house? That is amazing. After like having Patriot in the chat, that's pretty funny. Congratulations, Flame and Sarge. Make sure that you whisper. Make sure that you whisper, Blondie. Blondie, but geeky. Just you should be able to find it. Hey, right, he said whisper sent to Blondie Eye. Right, okay. I didn't know if Shannon is Shannon actually here. Yeah, they're punks two two three. Oh really? Hey Shannon, you need to make it okay. So a little bit of feedback. We went through a whole thing trying to find your RGB software, and it's really it was really hard to find. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll find you. I'll talk to you about the feedback afterwards. No reason we 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 got it figured out, but it took some time. So I'll find you. Yeah, I know you love getting feedback. So we and but yeah. Winner confirmed. Congratulations and huge shout out, guys! Everybody, just so you know, we have uh, we basically have. Uh, uh, Patriot in the house, which is funny because we didn't we not say BMAC? I was like, dude, he's, his ears are going to tingle. And he's going to jump in. Right. <laughs> and then he actually showed up. But yeah, there it is, guys. We have that Viper Elite, the VP4300, two terabyte uh, light drive, and the 48 gigs of Viper Elite DDR5 in here as well, guys. So, which looks absolutely stunning, by the way, uh, once we got the orange and everything in there. So, um, okay, guys, that is it for today's stream. We are back tomorrow for the uh, Intel live show. We're gonna be checking out Pacific Drive. I'm actually cosplaying, just as an FYI. Plus we're giving away, we're giving away copies of the game. I think we're giving away other stuff as well. That's at noon Pacific time. Uh, and then we're back on Friday, Saturday. We're gonna be doing a build for Make-A-Wish. It's gonna be raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We're doing an all Noctua themed geometric future build. Not the uh, Model 2, the Model 8, the Cowboy. It's got leather in it and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, that's going to be happening uh, on Saturday. Uh, and then uh, we'll see what the rest of the week brings, guys. There's some pretty exciting stuff coming up over the next couple uh, over the next couple weeks. So anyway, guys, but we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you on Saturday. Outside of that, have a great night, and we'll see you guys in the right. next episode. Bye, guys.